our little corner has come to Main Mill Street in the south end of Plattsburgh. Fox Hill. <laughs> oh, great Fox Hill. What a great area. I've written about it, talked about it. Talk about neighborhoods. It's fantastic. The reason we came, well, I've wanted to interview Gary for a long time. This is Gary Skinkle, but he sent me an email. When was that? Oh, I'd say a month or so ago, Gordon. A month I think. or so, yeah. an email. And he knew that I had an interest in history, knew that Calvin has an interest in local history. And he had come across a book that right. is a real treasure. I thought I was thought and it, it has to do with tremendous history because it's connected with Plattsburgh Air Force Base when the ground was broken here. First day. 50 years ago. January 29th, 1954. Isn't that amazing? About two weeks before I was born. So who knows what we hang our hats on when we start our little corner program. But uh, uh, You're an interesting guy whom we've met before, and we're going to find out a lot about you, and we're going to find out a lot more about this book right here. And Calvin will take a picture of it. And you, this is what we would call pure serendipity. Absolutely. It was the luck of the draw, Gordy. You were walking down the street one day. Yep, Margaret Street, back in the mid-80s, along with my, uh, well, she was my girlfriend back then, and she's now my lovely wife, and her two youngest children, and we were just out for a summer stroll in downtown Plattsburgh and passed by the Cornerstone Bookstore down on Margaret Street, and they had a box of Free stuff. They and, do. Nancy oh, has yeah, done that for absolutely. years. And, and who can pass up a bargain, right? Of course. And we're all great readers and love to read. And so we dug through the box, and uh, I found that little treasure. And uh, having grown up about a quarter mile from the flight line of the Air Force Base, listening to the B-52, or the B-47s at first, and then days. the B-52s yep. and the FB-111s and the KC-135s coming almost over my house, I always had an interest uh, in aviation and in the Air Force. Uh, I had a short career in the Air Force myself, so I had this uh, connection to the Air Force Base, and I saw this book, and I just thought it was terrific. And I went through it and read all the letters from the dignitaries and saw the pictures and, and um, enjoyed it immensely. And they had a couple stories by a fellow named uh, T. Harold Weldon, who uh, wrote a, a kind of a little history of the military in Plattsburgh area, and also a story about how the uh, base and the liaison commission uh, got started and got the whole project underway. And the best thing was the advertisements that they sold for this souvenir program. Uh, there was one for Plattsburgh Laundry here in Plattsburgh. I forget the street address, but I remember the phone number because the phone number was three. <laughs> You've got to love no, it. No, it's in there, yeah. and we'll probably take a look at it later. But if you wanted to call Plattsburgh Laundry, you pick up your phone and dial three, and there they were. Is it that? But some Isn't great advertisements right? in there for businesses that are still around today and for many that aren't, of course. And it, it's very nostalgic, and it's very historic, and it's, uh, of course, we all know the base was such an important part of Plattsburgh and the whole county. And uh, so I just thought it was a tremendous thing. And I didn't think too much more about it for years, and I, it kind of got lost, and I couldn't remember where I put it, Gordy. No, I've never done that before. No. Have you, Calvin? And one day I was reading the Press Republican back, I think, around 91, late 91, early 92. And there was an article in the Press Republican that the city of Plattsburgh was going to be celebrating their 90th anniversary of Plattsburgh being chartered and incorporated as a city. And what they were doing was they were having a big ceremony at City Hall, and what they wanted to do was they wanted to have portraits of all the mayors of the city of Plattsburgh, but there were six that they couldn't find. And so they were soliciting the help from the community and asking if people had any um, portraits or pictures of, of these mayors. Well, I couldn't believe that one of them was old black top Black Jack Terrell because, I mean, he was mayor virtually forever yeah, through my entire longer. youth and growing up, and it was in recent times, the 50s and 60s, so I couldn't believe that they didn't have a, a, a photograph of portrait quality of, of Mayor Terrell. And I knew that I had a book somewhere that had a picture that looked like an official portrait of Mayor Terrell. And I got to thinking, where did I put it? Well, I found it. And I sent it down to Jim Bailey. I called him up and I sent it down there to the, uh, to the um, city historian's office. And um, they loved it. And then they sent me back eventually the book. And they also sent me a copy of their souvenir program guide for the 90th anniversary of Plattsburgh's charter. And I believe, but I'm not certain of this, but I believe if you go in the city hall chambers, the common council chambers, where they do have the portraits of the mayors, 
I think that they enlarged the photo from that book, and that's the photo of Jack Terrell that hangs on the wall, but I can't guarantee you that. You might check with Jim Bailey and see. The best part of it is I never knew they were looking for that because I've got pictures of... Uh, well, you must have pictures of everybody that's ever lived I, in the Plattsburgh area. <laughs> I've got Terrell pictures <laughs> sure. for sure from the, from the old... Oh, absolutely. The annual publications for the city police department back in the 50s mm -hmm. and several other sources. Mm -hmm. But uh, unlike your stuff, which is very carefully cataloged... Oh, it, absolutely. <laughs> I wouldn't know what drawer. I'd say, Kay, where's Jack Terrell's picture? And she'll get her head like this, and she'll find it in some drawer somewhere. Well, God bless her. <laughs> but we're here today because Gary's done something which I think is a labor of love. It was. It took him several days. He scanned this entire publication. 132 pages. It was uh, issued <laughs> as a souvenir. It was issued as a souvenir, Gordy, from the uh, liaison commission, uh, of course, of Clyde Lewis's outfit, and Mr. Weldon that I mentioned earlier alluded to. Uh, he was an original member of that commission, and they prepared this 132-page uh, souvenir program uh, to give out to the people that attended the ceremonies. They had two ceremonies, by the way. They had uh, groundbreaking, actual groundbreaking ceremonies out. It describes it in there. But the way they describe it, I think they're talking somewhere around the curve of Route 22 going out toward Peru. Um, before, you know, as you're leaving Plattsburgh, and there's that curve where they had the entrance to the fish concert, if you recall. And that, it, it, just for the sake of our people who watch this program on a mm -hmm. regular basis, that was probably right in the middle of Pike's Cantonment. Really? Our good friend Keith Herculo, who's the city clerk, claims to have found the exact location. I recall reading about that. Uh, amidst a great deal of controversy as to where it was actually located. And that's where it was. Yeah, most, I believe both so. Both sides of Route 22. And, and yes, and they mentioned, they mentioned the town garage at that point. So I guess the town garage for town of Plattsburgh at some point was in that neck of the woods. That's possible. Yeah, well, we're talking 50 years ago. Before our time, Gordy. <laughs> well, it's not before my time because I worked on construction helping to build Plattsburgh Air Force right. Base in that very year. There you go. So little did you know, you touched a lot of wonderful yeah. nerves oh, when I'm you glad. told me about this. The fact that you put it online so it's there for all it's posterity yes. to see is a wonderful thing. We're going to talk a lot more about that. We're going to find out. Gary Skinkle, this is your life. <laughs> We're going to find out a lot about you and so many interests that uh, I think our ho entire audience will uh, be able to attach to before we finish this program. Stay with our little corner. Gary, uh, once again, we're talking with Gary Skinkle on Main Mill Street at his home. Uh, the focus of our program is this souvenir program, the groundbreaking ceremonies for Plattsburgh Air Force Base, in uh, 1954, right? January 29th, 1954. 1954. Have you always been uh, fascinated by aircraft? Yes, I, actually I have. Uh, um, I grew up right here on this lot on 31 Main Mill Street. And Come on! I, oh yeah, I was, I was born in Saratoga Springs, New York, and about a month later I came to live and was raised by my maternal um, grandfather and, um, and his second wife. And they became my mom and dad. And um, so I've been here at 31 Main Mill Street off and on. Of course, I've traveled and done other things and lived in a few other places of short term. But basically, I've been here since uh, March, of, uh, March or April of 1954. Back then, we had a little 10 by 50 foot trailer, a mobile home. And we had five people living in that. Oh, boy. Uh, yeah, 10 feet by 50 feet. And the ceiling was about, oh, seven feet at the most. And it was, uh, but it was home. And, and uh, my dad was a plumber. Uh, I call him my dad. He was my grandpa, Francis Taylor, and uh, he was a plumber here and uh, from Lake Placid, New York. He worked on um, he worked uh, in Oak Ridge in Tennessee during the war, and they lived in a trailer park down there. And uh, they had an FBI agent as their neighbor in the trailer next to them. And then um, then he came back north. They came, the family came back. This was before my time. They came back north, and he uh, settled into doing plumbing here in the Plattsburgh area. And for a while during the Atlas mi Missile Project, he was the plumber that would go around the circle of missile bases, and uh, he had an electrician that would go with him, and they would go, and they had to do this route of uh, in doing the missile bases and fixing any little plumbing repairs or electrical problems that needed to be fixed. For our, the benefit of our viewers who may not know that piece of uh, North Country history, something we've mentioned numerous times before, but the building of those 12 Atlas missile sites circling this area coincides with uh, my uh, visits to come 
to Plattsburgh to work in the radio business mm -hmm. in 1961. This was a hopping town back in those yes, days. Yes, it was. I was a young, a young boy, mostly playing baseball and football out in the backyards and in the fields. And uh, but um, I remember a lot. I was always someone that it, I, I listened to the news on television e even when I was young, and I even read the newspaper, believe it or not. And um, my whole family were voracious readers. We always had plenty of books and magazines and. Uh, I had subscriptions to Popular Mechanics, and as uh, did we all. Oh yeah. yeah, and we had the World Book Encyclopedia and the Child Craft uh, accompaniment to that. And I was in Book of the Month clubs, and <laughs> one of my <laughs> favorite books was the We Were There series. I don't know oh, if you remember those, course. where they would take usually a teenage boy and girl yep. and place them in a historic context. And one of my favorites was We Were There with the with the Wright brothers. And we were there oh, with the Nautilus, the first really, atomic powered you're really submarine. Peaking some wonderful Aren't they? Yeah, for those, me those too. are terrific. And um, but yes, I always was into aviation. When I was a kid, I used to publish my own magazine called um, Sky Times, and I would draw the, gotta using be no. Kidding. Well, I had an aunt down in Mechanicville at the West Virginia Pulp and Paper Factory, and my her, my my mom's sister, my grandma's sister, and we'd go down there, or the, or she'd come up to visit. And she would bring the seconds, reams of paper, and they were various colored paper, like, you know, regular typing paper, but they would be white and pink and gold colors and light green colors, and they were stuff that was going to be thrown away. So I always had tons of paper, and I would make my own comic books. I had a friend um, that I went to grade school with, and for a few years we create our own comic book characters. I know that's something you guys are into. But, um, Elvin is. Uh, yeah, I know yeah. he is. And... Um, we would do that, but one of the things I did was I did this little magazine, and I called it Sky Times, and I would draw pictures. I was mostly into World War II aircraft, like the P-51 Mustangs and the P-47 Thunderbolts oh, yeah. and the P-38 Lightning and the whole nine yards, and um, some of those German aircraft, like the Messerschmitts and the jet aircraft at the end oh, of the yeah. war. So I would draw pictures. Each, 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 art, or each issue of my Sky Times magazine would feature one of these aircraft, and I would write my feelings about it and I'd draw pictures of it and I had I forget exactly what I had and I think I did about oh a half a dozen or more issues of that thing of course I I say I published it I didn't really publish it I just wrote it and and drew it and then I would show it to my friends and uh, my older sister always had an Air Force boyfriend and the two gals next door that were of that dating age who were good friends with my sister they both were dating Air Force guys and so I had them as a as a resource, and so the Air Force and the airplanes and aviation was always a big We're part of my part. life. Isn't that yeah. interesting? Did yeah. you save any of those old books? No, no. I wish I had. I think they probably went the way of my old no, comic books no and everything more sky else. Time? Oh, no more sky times. Just a, a distant shame. memory. Yeah, it was fun. It was fun. I enjoyed it. Now, uh, my mother saved all that stuff, and as we were growing up, my mother. You know, who couldn't afford to send me uh, expensive Christmas or birthday presents would find some of my old things, yes. put them in a little care package, and mm -hmm. send them along. And I would find a book of poetry that Isn't I had that written right? at age eight. My sister in Mississippi does the same type of thing now. Um, I didn't have a lot of uh, memorabilia from, from my parents when um, they had passed away. It's been many, many years. And... Um, my older my oldest sister down who's actually my half step aunt <laughs> or whatever <laughs> but we grew up as brother and yeah. sister and she's about 10 years older than i me and um we she sends me little uh, heirlooms and things like that we have a uh, my mom used to collect salt shakers so we had a kissing pigs with the noses oh, or magnets yeah. and things like that and she'll find things like that and send them to me so it's it's nice when you it's nothing that costs them any money, but it's the wonderful thought behind it, and it's just a treasure, and you know, something you but treasure. What a forever. shame you didn't save any of that, any of your. Oh, I know. Oh, the comic here. books. If I'd saved yes. some of the comic books, I could probably sue some of these comic book companies. I came up with some of the ideas before they did. What? Sky Times. <laughs> well, what this a great was idea. Well, yeah, but there were magazines out. I used, you know, I, I mean, there were a lot of mag popular mechanics and or popular science always did uh, features on aviation, and this. This wasn't, of course, anything of that caliber. But yeah, I would, I, I would love to have, have been able to save one of those or one of the old comics that I drew or that my friend drew. And um, I lost touch with him many years ago. And I, even with the internet, I can't find that one particular fellow. I've been trying for years. And I found a lot of old friends and been in touch with them. Um, uh, but this one particular and, fellow... And it'll happen maybe when you least expect I, it. I would hope because I would like to see him. Watching those his What's his name? His name was Kenneth Reeler, and um, his dad was Air Force, and um, he was a black fellow. He was one of the only one or two black fellows we had at our grade school down at Monty Street School. 
and him and I were just became famous friends. I mean, we would spend every weekend together, either at my house or at his house, and we would spend hours playing out superhero comic book things, or we would actually be drawing and writing our own comic book characters. This bit would have been what time period? That would have been in the, in the 60s, um, the early 60s. And then they eventually went to uh, back to New York City, where his I believe his dad was from. His mom was from Bermuda, I believe, and his dad was from New York City. And they they ended up in Queens, New York, and he went to some fancy um, high school of science or math and science or something. And they had a reunion recently. I found his name, but his name was only there because he was one of the people they couldn't locate for the reunion. And how would you spell the last name? R e e l e r. Kenneth Reeler. And well, who knows? You who know? knows? Who knows? You never know. Like I say at the end of the program. But they were only here. Knows? They were only here for a couple of years. Yeah. Uh, lived in Plattsburgh for a couple of years. But him and I just hit it off because we had this common bond of of comic books. Uh, you know, Superman, Batman, and the Marvel comic books too. And uh, we'd create our own characters and write our own stories and draw our own comic books because I had this vast, endless supply of paper that was just right <laughs> eight and a half by eleven. You know that's. I, I, and we're on the same wavelength here. It's Calvin smiling over there because he's always loved comic mm -hmm. books, and I have always loved comic books. And my dad um, was a, a minister back in in the early my early days were far before your early days. <laughs> but my dad worked part time nights at the Reader's Digest oh, in Pleasant wow. Pleasantville, Pleasantville sure. and we lived right two miles from there, so we had an unlimited yeah. supply because he would bring all the scrap paper exactly. home, all the different colored paper and rolls of paper, and so we always had things to draw on, and. Until this very moment, it didn't dawn on me, that's where I started drawing. Mm -hmm. I draw a lot. Every day I draw pictures. And that's where my drawing was because there was always, always paper. paper, always pencils. Mm -hmm. And your love for books is like my love for books. Mm -hmm. We're the same family, and I've kidded folks many times. When we go on vacation, my bag of books to read is bigger <laughs> than my suitcase. Yes. And so, you know, we've, we travel down... A lot of the yeah, same. Yeah, a lot path. of the same paths. Yeah. So you went to high school here. I went to PHS? high PHS. I went to PHS uh, for my freshman and uh, most of my sophomore year, and then I transferred down to Saratoga Springs for a while, and um, I didn't quite graduate. I left school in my senior year there, and uh, headed off to make my way in the world, and ended up in New Haven, Connecticut, and that's another adventure and story in itself <laughs> for another day. That was during the height of the anti-Vietnam movement and the Black Panther trials oh, and yeah. all the various social issues of the time and um, and eventually found my way back up north and uh, and eventually um, after doing some factory work uh, mostly in the textile industry in Saratoga and Utica um, a lot of bartending uh, in local bars around here. Uh, the old Happy Herbie's bar oh down on the old uh, <laughs> college inn down on oh, Bridge Street and wow. uh, um, Al's patchwork out on the Salmon River Road when that was in existence and um, things like that and, and eventually got into television in the 70s and um, off and on stayed in that until I left uh, a few years ago in the year 2000 and kind of struck out on my own again. Well that's where we first met you at Channel 57. I believe it a, was. You did a, yeah, program, you did a program there, there and uh, I was one of the people you came and talked to. to and you to, were there for how long? Um, oh, a, a total of probably around 15 years. I was no there. Kidding. I started in. The, I started shortly after the station went on the air. They went on the air, I believe, in '77. I started work there in '79, and I was there into the uh, early '80s. And then in the late '80s, I went back and was there until 2000. So what have you been doing since? Well, I operate my own business here from home, and um, I do internet marketing consulting. I do freelance writing. Um, I run a lot of affiliate programs where I get paid commissions for um, sell, uh, moving traffic around the internet, basically. Yeah. And um, I live here now with my wife. We're ho uh, we're not homeless. We're uh, empty nesters because uh, <laughs> the children are all grown and all grown yeah. and gone. And um, she's a family nurse practitioner down on uh, Court Street, Marilyn McClure. Oh yeah. And um, and uh, so that's that's what we do. She she goes off to to save the world each day and make people better. And um, I try to move a little traffic around the internet and, and make some money. And uh, it works out well. And we're very happy. And uh, gives us time to indulge in some of our other hobbies, like the Air Force uh, souvenir groundbreaking uh, guide. And um, She's currently on a, an artistic bench. She's taking an art class on Tuesday nights. And just this morning, she said, you know, she said, 
what do you think about, she said, Kathleen, her art instructor, uh, keeps talking about she needs a website. Maybe you should make her a website and we could barter it for some more art lessons. I said, that's a pretty good idea. So we're thinking about doing that. And Kathleen, of, if you're watching, I know you haven't heard this yet, but that's what Marilyn has planned. But the age of bartering has not gone at <laughs> no, all. No, it isn't. Not, not at all. Barter services. Absolutely. I, they certainly do. And if I can get my wife some art lessons uh, yeah. for building her instructor a website, hey, why not? You'd be amazed how many people do that. That's, uh, that's something we might do a whole program about You probably about could. Yeah, right? that's a pretty big thing, I think. Yeah, except the IRS is going to be watching. That. That's yeah. true. That's yeah. true. The, the names have been changed to protect the <laughs> we, we won't tell them your exact address here on Main Mill Street. Oh, that's okay. They know where to find me if they Let's want. Let's get back to this sure. souvenir program with it. And of course, the name T. Harold Weldon caught my eye yeah, the yeah, minute yeah. I looked at it. Groundbreaking ceremonies. I want to just go through a little bit sure. of the book. First of all, um, there's a photograph which our viewers may have seen before. The inside front cover. Yeah. Inside front cover. Because uh, our young viewers may not know it, but certainly those people who are regular viewers and who've lived here for a while know that there's been a military presence in Plattsburgh for since the 200 years or <laughs> since the beginning of the nation. Mm -hmm. And so a military presence had already been here long before they decided to turn this into Plattsburgh Air Force. Oh, absolutely. Base. And our viewers also know that there was a large segment of the of the state college system here in a, in a thing called Champlain College in mm -hmm. the 50s, destined to be one of the biggest segments of the state university at the time until until our friend Clyde, Clyde Lewis, Lewis and, his and others <laughs> decided that would be a nice place for an air base. And it, and it certainly was. It was prime beachfront <laughs> property for the most part. And um, and that's what happened. And, and the rest, as they say, is history, of course. But... Uh, it was that you mentioned. You alluded to that that military presence here in Plattsburgh, and that and that wasn't just in the Air Force. There was a Navy presence in the area. There was an Army presence in the area. Of course, with the old 90-day yep. program, and um, so it was uh, it was a big thing for Plattsburgh, and it was an even bigger thing when it ended. And I I know we were all shocked, and we couldn't believe it as we watched probably. C-SPAN that day when the re uh, realignment committee was meeting, the closure commission down in Washington, and um, our, our hearts sank, And but we kept fighting. The community uh, gathered, and we tried, and we tried, and unfortunately, the base was slated for closure, and the base did close, and we move on. Um, we're doing wonderful things. Park's done a wonderful job, and now the, the city and town and the county are all working hard to to bring it around, and it's looking rather good. And so we can be nostalgic, wax nostalgic about the Air Force and the, and the military presence, but it's over. We have to accept reality, and uh, we have wonderful memories, and uh, we have some physical treasures like this book and the digitized version that we have online now, and uh, we can enjoy those memories. You know, and as we speak, I, sh I should mention because this... Calvin and I are fully aware that this program itself becomes a part of Plattsburgh and Clinton County history. That's true. We love to replay the old programs years later. We're recording this in uh, the latter days of March 2004. And as we are recording this, there's a great deal of excitement and enthusiasm about a new presence that hopefully will adopt Plattsburgh Air Force Base and hopefully this area will embrace them it will mean an infusion of thousands That's of people. That's what jobs. I hear. And when I first heard that in a little article in the Press Republican the other day, um, they mentioned the name of the company being Precision Jet Management, being based uh, out of Syracuse and having some type of connection with the Pyramid Corporation, of course, the malls, the Champlain Centers. And um, it was interesting that you bring that up, Gordy, because I started to try to do a little research on Precision Jet Management, and I could not find anything. They have no website, and I couldn't find any references to them anywhere. I thought, well, maybe a Syracuse newspaper's website or a Syracuse area's um, television or radio station's website might have some type of a reference to them somewhere. Nothing. Well, I wasn't going to be paranoid. I was just curious because I know <laughs> some companies some companies like to maintain you know, a, a very sure. low profile. And so... Um, I sent a little note up to someone at, at Channel 5 and a note to Joe LaTemplio over at, at the Press Republican and um, just asked him a couple questions. And um, Joe wrote back, um, and he kind of he laughed in his email message to me, saying, yeah, he said, they're pretty stealthy, but they really do exist. 
And I told him, I said, yeah, I didn't doubt that they existed. I just wanted to make sure that the, the, the city fathers and the county fathers and the town fathers had, you know, at least validated their credentials and everything. And then within a day or two, they gave the name of a spokesman for the company, and it turned out I did a little research on this fellow, and he used to be a chief general counsel for the Federal Aviation Administration. So I think they're a pretty legitimate outfit, and I look forward to them coming I look forward to hearing aircraft again at the at the base because I so grew up I. with those planes swooping amazing? over. Oh, it was it was people would say, "How can you sleep?" or "How can you get anything done with those planes going over every, you know?" And of course, back during the Cold War, there was a lot of that when they were on alert most of the time, and um, it was second nature. It's like the ticking of a clock that's a little annoying. You get used somebody to it. Somebody with a railroad in their backyard. Absolutely, or, you, you know. get used to it, and um, and then when they were gone, you miss it. That's when you miss it when they're gone. You yeah. know, I I've, I've never had any formal connection with the armed services. I was in college for 6 years back in the in the 1950s until 1961 and was was never in the armed service. So when I came here to Plattsburgh, I you know, I, I worked on the air base pouring cement mm -hmm. and then I embraced the, the concept the mission of Plattsburgh Air Force Base here and they hopefully did that for me mm -hmm. and I was a member of that liaison commission with oh, okay. with with Clyde and Joe mm -hmm. Bornstein and yeah. the whole crew for all of those years mm -hmm. until the base closed and so I felt as though I were was in the United States Air Force well in a way you were <laughs> I worked very very hard to support that mission I was taking off my coat last night and saw a beautiful plaque on the wall in my mud room our, where we, our laundry room is and it was because of the time I had spent during the Gulf War uh -huh. day and night for three days yeah. interviewing those people who came back and yeah there's, there's a lot of nostalgia there is an there awful is. lot of nostalgia there there is uh, that base was such a big part not only economically but it brought a lot to the area um, I mentioned earlier the, um, my friend the comic book fellow Ken Reeler um, you know, African American, uh, and um, obviously here in the North Country of New York, we didn't have a lot of African Americans living here. But when the base came in, especially, then we would get African Americans and people from other cultures and backgrounds. And a lot of the base kids went to school on the base, and a lot went to Peru. But some did come here in the Plattsburgh City sure. Schools, and it just brought a, a wide mixture of, of, of uh, ideas and and just being around people from a different culture. I think it helped my generation especially because that's the generation that really went through the civil rights movement and everything we had a direct connection we could say well yeah i know a um a, a black fellow or um or there's a there's a, a black gal that goes to school with me or something we had at least we knew somebody it wasn't like we're living in limbo somewhere and watching it on the news every night and and wondering what was going on so we could talk to people and and make friends with people or not as the case may be with some people obviously but I think that brought a lot to the Plattsburgh area, um, whether it was um, different types of foods from uh, these people that traveled the world. And they, music. And, and music, athletes, everything, and, and all, all types of arts. culture, absolutely. Yeah. No, so, we, so not only economic impact, but the social impact and, um, and just the idea that we kind of felt kind of special here in Plattsburgh. Um, we had this Air Force base. and. We knew that we had the target on our back if anything ever happened, but, but we still know, we felt proud. In, we put that on the back burner, most of us did. Yeah, yeah, we didn't sit and think about it every day. Although civil defense was really big for a lot of times, as Calvin remembers. Yes, it was, years, it was, and it was a little scary. I was a young fellow during the Cuban Missile Crisis, but I remember watching those days in October on TV, and uh, God bless Bobby Kennedy for coming up with a solution and telling his brother, the president, that well, let's just ignore that second part of their conditions and pretend we didn't get it. And they said, <laughs> and it worked out, and the whole thing blew over. Well, what a volatile time that was in our nation's was. history. But we had the base here, so we could kind of feel protected in a sense, even though that wasn't their mission to protect Plattsburgh, New York. But they were our base, and they were our guys, and uh, so we had that connection with them too. So here we are in 2004, holding this book from 50 years ago in our hands, and is that Ike there? President I, Eisenhower. I like Ike. I like Ike. Remember yeah. those buttons? And of course, he's in here because he was president of the United States uh, when the base, when ground was broken to construct Plattsburgh Air Force Base. And this uh, almost coincided with the um, the advent of the St. Lawrence Seaway. Yeah, it was around the same time, right? Um, I'm not that close. Eisenhower connected with was that. here. Yeah. 
We're talking with Gary Skinkle on Main Mill Street in Plattsburgh, and we came here for a lot of reasons. We've wanted to do an extensive, in-depth interview with Gary for a long time, but the uh, the nucleus of our conversation is this wonderful, groundbreaking book from Plattsburgh Air Force Base back in 1954. As you've obviously are become intimately familiar with this book, having scanned yeah. every cotton pick and page. 132, <laughs> you including deserve, the covers. <laughs> you deserve a medal for that alone. <laughs> Go through and, and pick sure. out some of the things that you found very, very interesting that our audience might find interesting, and then we'll take pictures of them All as, right. as we go, Gary. Terrific. Well... At the beginning of the book are mostly proclamations uh, by various officials and photographs of those officials. Um, there's a proclamation by the mayor declaring it a groundbreaking day. There's a picture of uh, then-President Dwight Eisenhower, who was also commander-in-chief, of course, of the Armed Forces. And then there's a, a letter, a kind of a, a welcoming letter to the Air Force from the um, from Clyde Lewis and members Clyde of Lewis. The, yeah, yep. the, the original and founder and guidance behind the uh, liaison commission. Uh, there's also a picture of uh, Governor Dewey, who was our New York, gov New York governor then. Let me take a shot at some of yeah, Oh, sure. Yes, and there's Governor Dewey. Oh, that's beautiful. Hey, that letter was signed by Clyde Lewis. Yes, it by, was. Uh, and by Russell Barnard, the vice chairman, mm -hmm. Charles The Hammett, Russell Barnard building just down the street. Well, there you go. Russell Barnard Apartments mm -hmm. and John Long. And the Long chair. Apartments on Oak Street, right? So, so you see. These guys These people have been not only, not only wrote letters, they had buildings named for them. Yeah, well. <laughs> but they're all people that contributed greatly to the community. Oh, then there are various other photographs. Um, and then there's stories in here also, Gordy. You mentioned T. Harold Weldon before. He's written a few uh, short stories, or not stories, but articles. Uh, there's one entitled Our Plattsburgh in the Military, which uh, just gives a brief uh, background of all that military presence of over 200 years that we talked about earlier. And he puts it, sets it down in uh, kind of a narrative form so that now people let's can... let's show some of these. Sure. Uh, some of these photographs as well, so some of our audience can get a chance to see uh, Irving Ives, Herbert Lehman. The, you got it? Okay. Um, Charles Wilson and Harold Talbot, Secretary of the Air Force yes. back in those days. Here we have pictures of uh, Dean Taylor, who was a congressman at the time, and Mayor Terrell. Uh, mayor of the city of Plattsburgh, and there's our friend Clyde Lewis. Oh, wonderful picture of Clyde. Well, <clears throat> is that the picture of uh, of the mayor? That's that the gave? picture of the mayor that we spoke about earlier. And uh, the interesting story about that was, I told you earlier the story about how I located this book down at Nancy Dunho's Cornerstone Bookstore down in downtown Plattsburgh back in the 80s. And then in the um, early 90s, well, 92 was the 90th anniversary of Plattsburgh being chartered and incorporated as a city. And um, they were having big ceremonies, and they decided one of the things they wanted to do to commemorate that was to have portraits of every mayor of the city of Plattsburgh that they could display in the common council chambers. And for some reason, they couldn't find um, suitable portraits of six mayors. And they put a, um, a little notice out in the um, Press Republican newspaper and soliciting uh, help and support of the community. And one of them, I couldn't believe, was they needed a portrait of Mayor Terrell. Now, that was in the 50s and 60s, and he was mayor for an awful long time. And I just couldn't believe that they hadn't been able to find a suitable portrait. But I knew that I had this book, although at the time I didn't know where it was. And I knew there was a portrait quality photograph of Mayor Terrell in that. Well, I did dig the book out, and I sent it down to Jim Bailey, the, the historian for, for City of Plattsburgh. And, um, oh, a few weeks later... They sent, he sent it back to me, and he also sent me a copy of the souvenir program from the 90th anniversary of the city of Plattsburgh's uh, charter. And um, I'm not certain of this, but because it's been over 10 years now, and as I get older, my memory starts to fade <laughs> a little bit. Yeah. But as I recall, it's, it's very possible that when you go into the Common Council Chambers in uh, City Hall down in Plattsburgh, that the portrait now that is there of Mayor Terrell was an enlargement made of this photograph of Mayor Terrell in the corner of this yeah, book. I love it. I can't swear to that, but um, <laughs> if, if someone wanted to check with, with Jim Bailey, he might be able to, to clarify that. But uh, that, was, uh, that was pretty interesting. And then the book got put away for many more years, and I couldn't locate it. And then <laughs> I ran across it one day. And I ran across it, and the thing that struck me was I opened it up, and on the very first 
page, it had the date January 29th, 1954. Well, this was in the fall of 2003. And I said to myself, wow, it'll be 50 years since the base started. I said, I should do something with that. I said, well, let me look at this book. So I looked at the book again and went through it as I had several times over the previous years. And I said, you know, there's nothing in here that's copywritten. It was um, produced by the government. It's public domain information. It was distributed freely as a souvenir. And um, I think it would be a wonderful thing if we were to digitize this and make it, put it on a, a, a permanent type of thing, uh, some type of media that's not going to fall apart like a book eventually, no matter how well you try to preserve it. And so I did. I scanned it, all 132 pages like we laughed about before, and it's now up online at plattsburghonline.com, and it'll be there forever, or at least my lifetime, and hopefully people will be making copies, and so it'll always exist in some form or another online, I'm sure. Um, there have been people, there's a a group of former Plattsburgh Air Force Base uh, people that have one of those Yahoo groups. Um, they kind of communicate with each other and stuff. And uh, I got in touch with them and was able to let them know that this was now online. And many of them have gone and looked at it, and it's brought back some good memories for them. Have you had some good responses? Oh, yeah, I've had some terrific responses, yeah, yeah. And um, from former former airmen and airwomen from the base and um, and people that used to live in Plattsburgh. and. It's just nice that they can look at that, um, especially the people that remember. Of course, we have a new generation coming up now that will never know the airbase other than seeing the, the airplanes on static display, regardless of whether they're on the corner or, or across, across the, the street, street or, or wherever. wherever they, but hopefully they'll, they'll still be there. And uh, But other than that, it'll be just a distant memory, and, and um, it'll eventually fade to some extent, but we keep it alive here with, with what you fellows do, sure. as you do with all the memories of, of the North Country. And uh, I just tried to do my little part to keep this one particular memory of Plattsburgh Air Force Base alive. Let's look a little sure. more through there and see what oh, else yeah. we Let's can come up on with. Oh, yeah, let's move on to, uh, so as I said, the early parts are the stories and the photographs. Um, there's some great pictures. Here's an aerial view of the city of Plattsburgh. Uh, McDonough Monument um, is there in the corner. Oh, sure, I see it. And that's, uh, that's an old photograph probably taken from an old airplane back in uh, those days. Okay. And... Um, isn't it boy what? more of Mr. Weldon's story, and then there's some photographs of uh, some oh secretary or office of the secretary of the Air Force and some deputies, uh, nobody real important. And then there's a program for the groundbreaking ceremonies. It, Gordy, it says uh, the, they had two parts to this groundbreaking. They they did an actual groundbreaking thing, and then later that evening at Bailey Avenue School they had a dinner. But part one was at the Clinton County Highway Department Building, Peru Road, on Plat at you know Plattsburgh, New York, at 2 p.m. And presiding was Clyde Lewis, the chairman of the liaison commission. Well, let me do, we'll just show what the program, the actual program, looked like here. I get my arm out of the way. Clyde Lewis was uh, the driving force behind Plattsburgh Air Force Base. Starting that day and for all the years the base existed, yeah, well, Clyde you know was, him very well. He was making the trek back and forth between here and Washington D.C. to make sure many trips, <laughs> make sure that everything was carefully. Here's a good held. picture. Remember this fellow? Oh. This is General Curtis E. LeMay, oh, who was the God. commander of the Strategic Air Command in that era, which was Plattsburgh was a SAC base, but he's also well known as being bomb him back to hell, LeMay. Oh, oh during goodness. the Vietnam War. Uh, he made that statement and caught a lot of flack about that. Curtis LeMay is the fellow up in the corner. Right up in the corner. And he was the general and the head of the um, Strategic Air Command at that and point. So many times I've heard uh, Clyde Lewis mention him in really? the testimonial speeches. I guess he was a pretty tough cookie from he what I understand. He was quite a guy. And then there's another uh, short article by Mr. Weldon. This one's entitled The Plattsburgh Air Base Story. And that's more, you know, the first article was about the history of Plattsburgh and the military. And then this is here. There's more dignitaries, um, various things of that nature. There's a little summary, uh, the dates that kind of tell the, uh, the thing, um, the whole chronology of, of how the base came to be, starting back in February of 52 with a visit by a general with a team which recommended the site and right up through the groundbreaking ceremonies. And then it goes on. Um, there's a roster of the original liaison committee and a portrait oh of the original liaison goodness, committee. Just take a and look. that portrait, obviously, I'm sure many of the viewers will recognize, is the uh, lobby at the uh, city at City Hall, right outside the uh, the courtroom and the wow. council chambers. 
Let me just look at sure, some, of, some, some of the names as we go. Leo Bailey, mm-hmm. Donald Briette, Richard Arbinger, Elmore Brewster, um, Cardi, Leclerc, Larravee, Walt Newell, George Ryan, Stewart, Quinlan, Valoni, Clyde, Russell Barnard, mm-hmm. Irwin Joe L. Bornstein. Bornstein. That's yep. the old soldier. That's we it. lost yeah. him this past year. Yes, we did. Charles Hammett, Redmond Holland, Kleinberg, of course, John Long, mm-hmm. uh, Sonnenschein, and is T. That? Harold Weldon. And T. Harold Weldon. And then, an, and then another list of, of, of the members, and just some of them, uh, the people might recognize their names. Uh, Peter Angelos. Oh, uh, yes. Um, I saw, who did I see? Vincent Jerry, Vincent S. Jerry, Vincent S. Jerry. Jack Harris, uh, all kinds of people. I mean, I don't want to read all the names, obviously, but uh, just uh, a lot of people, a lot of concerned and interested members of the community that worked hard along under Clyde's guidance to, uh, to get this thing done. I have to tell people here um, that endorsement of uh, building a Plattsburgh Air Force Base and bringing that presence to Plattsburgh was not unanimously oh no there were a lot of people in that the were, very beginning and yeah. Clyde had a battle mm-hmm. to get the base here a lot I've of heard some of those stories didn't think they wanted that presence here and there was a lot of controversy mm-hmm. in the media back in those days but he he just kept going and kept going and kept going and he got, he had a vision and he got the job done and and I think to our advantage in the long run and I think a lot of those early critics of the whole idea kind of warmed up to the idea as they certainly did as it as it came to fruition and I'm sure you talked with many people who were not from Plattsburgh who were stationed here Mm -hmm. who said the relationship between the community and the air base was one of the best best. they've ever seen anywhere in the world. Absolutely. I've heard that on many occasions. That's pretty decent. Here's a a picture of the Common Council of the City of Plattsburgh for the term of 1954 and 1955. Of course, Mayor Terrell and various members. Oh, this is so so interesting because we're getting photographs of people whose names are... Terrific. Are familiar. John Terrell, Redmond Holland, Charles LeClaire, Filoni, uh, Bernard Demery, Robert Stewart, Frank Carty. Yeah, all members of the county oh, council. Oh, wonderful. Area. And then it moves on. There's the, the, the county board of supervisors, which uh, I guess was the, kind of the precursor to the uh, county the legislature, legislature that's right? That's exactly what it okay, was. Okay, well, this is the board of supervisors from 1952 to 1953. So they were involved in the early goings this and this is really a arrangement tremendous of a, collection of yeah all the stuff the that, photographs in there are, are, are terrific let's give those names because that's that, the whole county yes, yeah well, absolutely. sure that, that's exactly right let's read Here's some of those story. james lacy mm-hmm. andrew risley norman, norman foot. foot leo bailey george ingles virgil trombley Lucian bouchard donald briette bruce labert walter davison james westcott Aaron Shire, uh, Daniel Ryan, Norman Miller, Robert Knapper, George St. John. Now those were the those were the the guys that were on that board um, in the early days before the base actually broke ground. And then as the the next term came in, there's a few additional ones probably there, Gordy, that um, weren't on the board the previous term. Lester Coopy, did I mention Walter Sanger? Let me see if there's uh, Bruce. Yeah, Bruce was on there before. Uh, okay. you got uh, Leonard Mil- Gatway. Mil- Mil- Levy. William oh, Levy. Oh yeah, William Levy. There you go. Sure. And uh, Leonard Gadway. Mm-hmm. There you go. And those were um, the equivalent of today's county legislators. I would I would suspect. Absolutely. And then comes some really great stuff, Gordy. Comes the advertisements. Of course, no program, no we, souvenir we like program would too, be uh, yeah. complete without the advertising. Uh, and uh, it all starts off well. It kind of some of these I won't show you all of them um, because the, and they're interspersed with some great uh, photographs too. Here's a, a terrific photograph of the monument, the uh, McDonough Monument down in, uh, across from City Hall in Plattsburgh. We uh, one of the first programs we ever did was a, a tour of that area with City Clerk Keith Herkel uh-huh. at City Hall, and we talked yeah. a lot about the design and building of the. McDonough Monument. But as we go through these advertisements, you you just kind of pick well, out the ones that you want to... Uh, I love them all. We, I know, I do too. I mean, We could start with to... Quick Flame. Oh, wait a minute, Gordy. You know what we just found here? We found a great picture of Margaret Street in downtown Plattsburgh. I believe that's the corner of Bridge, and that might be Clinton Street and Whoa. Protection Alley. What oh, do yeah. you think? Turn that, turn that over. <laughs> yeah, we got to see this one. That's really, really neat. Every now and again, we like to do a 
uh, program where Calvin and I just walk the streets or go mm-hmm. in the car and take pictures of the buildings yeah. and stores that are here now because 10 years from now, the face of the city is going to be completely different. But I, so I recognize that. I mean, I, I can't think that that could be any other than this is Margaret and there's yes. bridge off to that side yeah, right. That's okay. exactly what it is. So we got Finch Prime. Yeah, let's see. We Finch, got Finch, Finch Prime, Prime Merchants, Merchants Bank. Merchants National Bank. I love it. Oh, here's the Plattsburgh City Beach. We've got to uh, we've got to take a look at those days, Gordy. Oh, isn't that delightful? And somebody watching this program will say, I was in that picture. And those bathing suits are going to come back into style one of these days, too. Oh, my goodness. And, of course, on the the other page is the... There you go. W-E-A-V, Gordy, says, welcome to Plattsburgh Air Force Base. 1,000 watts. 1,000 watts. 960. Kelly Cycles. George Bissell. Bissell and Jack Charles. Well, George Bissell is the one who gave me my first job mm-hmm. in radio and fired me three months later in 1961, telling me I'd never amount to anything in the media <laughs> in this area. Well, well, and he's probably he, right. Oh, I think you've amounted to a little more oh, than that. Oh boy! Plattsburgh Stone Products, and then another great photograph of Champlain Valley Hospital, which still kind of oh. exists as a building up at, at Plattsburgh State University. Isn't that neat? I think these are. My classic. wife took classes there when uh, when she was uh, becoming a nurse. Classic photographs. We've talked about the history of that hospital and mm-hmm. the merge, the uh, merging of the two and the moving uh, of Phil patients. Yons. And Phil Yon's at 39 Bridge Street, oh. catering to the finest in gourmet. Not that mm-hmm. we would ever remember Phil Yon's, I right? remember Phil Yon's. <laughs> I remember Let's Phil Yon's. show a picture you of the show? airport. This is the Plattsburgh Municipal Airport, which nowadays people would be more familiar with as Clinton County Airport. And uh, it's important to show that now because, because very few it's going years, to be moving to the uh, old flight line on the old Plattsburgh Air Force Base. And it will become the international It'll be airport. an international airport. Oh, my. These, I love this stuff. Oh, yeah. And then, oh, here's, here's an old Genesee beer ad from Plattsburgh Distributing. Now, those guys are still in existence here, I think, locally. Uh, and there's um, a photograph of the former Catholic Summer School of America oh, on right. the lake. That's very, very important yes. because that is what is now Cliff Haven. Yes. And um, many, many important people visited the Catholic uh, summer school. Mm-hmm. A lot of those buildings became, uh, were, were homes after it closed and then eventually turned into the, uh, turned into what is now Cliff Haven. So that's right. a very the historic. First, the first yeah. suburb of Flatsburg, as I, as I always thought of it when I was a young fellow. Ah, here's the MLD, the old Municipal Lighting Department, the city of Plattsburgh's power source. These are great. Aren't these great? If Ron Venn is watching this program, he's going to go crazy. He's going to to Uh, want to take a picture of every one of these pictures. Well, they're all there. All you got to do is go to Plattsburgh Online and click on the link to the Air Force Base Souvenir Guide, and he can get every every page is right there. And you know uh, who Ron Venn has done this before. I know. I've seen those shows with him in the photographs. We've done a dozen shows with him, what, 13 maybe, or... And so, yeah, he'd love that. Oh, now, here's pictures. another one that's really important because it's at that time it was called Diamond Match, but it was at one point it was the Lozier Automobile, of course. Uh, right? Oh, my goodness. Look at these photographs. And um, that's interesting because I was just recently, uh, a couple weekends ago, I went over on to the, um, the Transportation Museum. They had an event and took my grandson over, and they had a Did lot you? of Lozier-related uh, stuff over there. Watch out, guy. Nancy Donald, who's going to want to buy this back, back for $5,000. Yeah. Well, we, I take a quick picture of Guy's Ice Cream, too. Oh, Guy's Ice Cream? That's yeah. And there's uh, Hawkins Hall, of course. We, back then, it was Plattsburgh State Teachers College. And, of course, now it's just a, one portion of the, of the state the university. The beautiful part of it is, in, in our hometown cable archives, we have a number of shows we've done on the history of the college, people describing that tremendous fire that they had mm-hmm. and the rebuilding and rebirth and then in the in the nineteen nineties the complete rehabilitation restoration mm-hmm. of that beautiful building. And here's uh, Bailey Avenue Elementary School, which was pretty new, of course, in those days. And that's where the ceremonies that evening on January 29th, ninth, nineteen fifty four, they held the reception, and that was at the Bailey Avenue School one of the elementary schools here in, in the city. And I'm sure many people watching this have gone to school there, have gone to programs Absolutely. There. And there's a beautiful photograph of St. John's Church oh, down in goodness. Plattsburgh, if you'd like to take it. And on the other side, we mentioned Vincent S. Jerry as being um, on, on uh, either on that sure. commission or, or one of the politicians back then. I guess he was on the commission. And there's an ad for his company. He, I guess he was a Caterpillar dealer in he those days for the most part. He was a big equipment dealer, and Mark Jerry, of course, took over the mm-hmm. reins. Absolutely. I went to school, I think, with uh, one or two of his kids. Or... Did you really? 
Well, just, just these are classics. You're really getting our crank turned here today. Just great, great stuff. Oh, it's terrific. Ah, we spoke about B-47s. Uh, here's a great picture. These were the first uh, bombers that were stationed at Plattsburgh Air Force Base. And, of course, the pride of the Adirondacks is a B-47 bomber that's on static display now, along with an FB-111. In the Clyde Lewis Park. And, uh, well, and, and the, yes, in the Clyde Lewis Park over on the corner. Feinberg, Jerry, Feinberg, and Lewis. Feinberg, Jerry, and Lewis. Uh, there you are. One of the ads from one of the legal firms here in Plattsburgh. And we saw the Champlain Valley Hospital, and now we've got a, a picture uh, from that era, or earlier perhaps, of the Physicians Hospital. Of course, they merged to become CVPH Medical Center. Boy, talk about the, f the face of something that has changed so That's much. changed. As we speak, things are being and added I don't and subtracted. See, There's I don't see a pond yet. <laughs> the pond came later, evidently. That, isn't that amazing? A.H. Marshall, Marshall Company. Company. Yeah. I get calls about A.H. Marshall all the time. Now, there's something that really hasn't changed too much, and that's, of course, City Hall in uh, downtown Plattsburgh, and that looks pretty much like it's always looked, I guess. But inside, you know, inside a lot's been magnificent. Done. Somebody told me they went to a recent puppet show in the third floor auditorium, which uh, has been restored to its original, even better than its original magnificence yeah, as the way it was planned, and thanks to... Keith Herculo, our friend, for doing that restoration, so it's a wonderful venue. And this is a photo of the Plattsburgh Dock and Yacht Basin, and I guess it's probably oh. right down where Frank Papps used to have his juniper at one point, exactly. probably, Let's right? Let's take a look and at this that. Is a, there's a, there is a boat there. I'm not sure which boat that is. but Well, that, it would have been back in those days, and who knows uh, if who that knows? would have been the Ticonderoga. That could have been. Was it still going, the Ticonderoga, then? I don't uh, think I so. I can't remember. I can't remember. I, I don't think... Yeah, I don't. And then the Tycon Rogue have a paddle wheel? Or? Possibly. Yeah. Yes, it did. Here at McMartin, uh, McMartin Motors. Motors, yeah. Uh, DeSoto and Plymouth. I guess oh, you can't buy boy. DeSotos anymore. And they also have line drawings in here. There's this great line drawing of the First Baptist Church um, as, as it looked back in those days here in Plattsburgh. That's really neat. That, that's good. I mean, you know, you, you expect to see photographs, and, and then you see these uh, line drawings in there. Oh, and a Coca-Cola oh. bottling. They're still around here in Plattsburgh. Uh, it's interesting to hard. look at this book and see on one page you have Plattsburgh without the H. Yes, and then some and places the you do you have Plattsburgh with, with the, the H. H. That's, that's, that's true. There's MAI, Mount oh, Assumption Institute, goodness. which became Seton when they merged with St. John's. And, and Calvin and I were just driving by there and wonder, wondering when they're going to make their move to Plattsburgh Air Force Base. Mm -hmm. And a few delays as we're taping this in, in March of uh, 2004. Of course, the plan, oh, plans are to move. This is the one I, I was talking to you about earlier, Gordy. Yeah. The thing that struck me about these advertisements were the phone numbers, when they did give a phone number. And here's my favorite. <laughs> You're right. Plattsburgh yeah. Laundry, and John Long was the John proprietor. John Long, Long's Laundry. Complete laundry service. He's welcoming the Air Force. And guess what his phone number is? There if it is. Calvin gets a shot of this. The if you laundry. wanted to call John Long at Plattsburgh Laundry, just pick up your phone and dial 3. We weren't dialing at my house. We were cranking. <laughs> right, yeah, right. yeah, cranking. That's there right. We were at my house. Well, then you tell her that you tell the, the operator three. <laughs> yep. There's Temple Beth Israel, which was established in Plattsburgh in 1861. Ah, uh, that would have been. I think that would have been on Oak Street. I believe so. Place. Yes, I believe so. In Oak Street, as I recall. And the rabbi, when I came here, was Saul Oster, and I'm not sure if mm -hmm. he was here at that time, but maybe. Well, I, let's see. Oh, that's the Plattsburgh Press Republican. Yeah, there's an ad for your Good Morning newspaper. They've changed their slogan over the years. At that point, they were serving over 39,000 readers in the North Country. And they're welcoming, taking an ad out in this souvenir program to welcome the Air Force Base to, to Plattsburgh. Uh, and here's uh, the ad and a photograph of Osable Chasm, the world-famous Osable Chasm. A lot of things have changed since then. Calvin and I, of course, done a couple of tours with them. They've had... Some massive floods. Oh right? yeah, in the 40s and then back in the 1960s, and even had a change to the other side of the of Route 9 to make the tour. Oh, are you, are you getting hungry, Gordy? They've got the menu here for for the dinner. Uh, it was part two of the um, of the ceremonies, and it was a banquet at Bailey Avenue School that evening of, of January 29th, 1954, at 7 p.m. On the menu that night was um, fruit cup Cumberland. I love it. Celery and olives. Prime ribs of beef, au jus, or you could have seafood a la Newburgh. So hopefully it was yeah. lobster, but they said seafood, so who knows? It might have been perch or smelt. <laughs> Whipped potatoes, buttered lima beans. Nobody eats lima beans. 
I love them. <laughs> you can have my them. share. You can have ah. my share. Hearts of lettuce salad with French dressing, warm dinner rolls, butter pecan ice cream with sugar wafers. That sounds pretty oh, decadent. Yeah. Coffee, tea, and milk. So that was on the menu that night. And uh, they started their program at 7 with the National uh, Anthem. And um, Reverend Ralph Turner from the First Baptist Church gave the invocation. And, of course, Clyde Lewis was the Toastmaster. Mayor Terrell uh, welcomed uh, the guests. Uh, the guests were introduced. Uh, and then um, an address was made by Major General John B. Montgomery, who was commander of the 8th Air Force. Yep. And then um, Leslie Ahrens uh, made, made an address, and then Reverend Weir from St. John's did the benediction. So that was the, the second part of the, uh, of the ceremonies that day, 50 years ago, a little now, a little over, almost 50 years and two months ago almost. And then we come to some more advertisements from the era, Gordy, uh, Champlain Valley Contractors Association, uh, Clinton Press down at Miller Street oh, at yeah. that time, uh, Plattsburgh Dairy over on Saley, the, the Frosty Dairy Bar. Yeah, the Frosty Dairy Bar. One mile south of city on Route 9. Talk about memory. <laughs> Isn't that something? Oh, my goodness. I don't know. This is amazing. They're great. William Bill Murray, Murray, the electrical contractor. I went to school with relatives of his. Frank Speth, plumbing and heating, sheet metal work. Boy, a little bit of everything. Plattsburgh Feed and Grocery. Sharon's, here's a good one. Uh, Sharon's was Plattsburgh's leading store, according to their ad at the time. Oh, sure. Uh, and they, I remember Sharon's. Any so. of the old-timers watching now will remember uh, Sharon's. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm I don't sure. think that would be that old. I'm not that old, and I remember Sharon's. Uh, <laughs> Austin's Men's oh, Shop, I remember well. E.J. Monroe, uh, they're still around, I believe, doing business, I think. Yeah, but they had a longer telephone uh, number. There's Wiry, 1340 on your dial. Welcoming uh, the Air Force to Plattsburgh. Now, mind you, Wiry had only been on the air for four years. Mm -hmm. Wiry went on the air on January 30th, 1950. Wow, there you go. And so they were uh, very, very new. Uh, the Hotel Cumberland, which at that point was Plattsburgh's largest hotel. Of course, it's a parking lot now, but and that's I remember the, the Cumberland well. Great Greyhound uh, bus mm -hmm. terminal was there okay. at the Cumberland. And that, as many of our viewers know, and if they don't know, I'll tell them. When I came up to audition for um, an announcer's job at WEAV at 34 Court Street, mm -hmm. where they were I located right were where there. I parked my car yeah, now. Yeah, exactly. That's right. They, uh, I, the bus depot was at the Cumberland. Okay. And I arrived in the middle of the night. That's the only bus. And drank coffee and read newspapers until I could walk over to the Weave Studios and do my audition. Wow. The next morning. So the Cumberland is significant for me. Yeah. Not only that, first. but I followed its history uh, after that and, and stood there and broadcast live yeah, as it burned to the ground. Wow, that was, that was terrible. Here's a couple about both. We can probably get these both in one shot. Merkel's Store of Cheerful Service, which most people will remember, and the Witherill Hotel, another one of the oh great Plattsburgh my. hotels with the with fife the and drum. And drum. Uh, yeah. Oh. These, it, these so are wonderful great. memories. I know. Uh, places you hadn't thought about for years or names that you hadn't had thought about for years, and then they just bring back memories. I mean, I can remember Merkel's with the pneumatic tubes, and you you did a story one time or, or, or uh, about, what, the escalator? Was there ever an escalator in Plastic Was and stuff? there an escalator? Yeah, and I could never remember, but I remember Merkel's mostly for the pneumatic tubes of sending the, the, the cash down to the thing, and you get your receipt. I go into that building many times now, and when I go... All the way upstairs or, or down on the ground floor, I think of uh, what it was like then. Fishman's. And I know many people who not only shopped at Fishman's, but who worked there. Yeah. Back in the 1950s and 60s. And of course, Ginsburg. Ginsburg, remember furniture? that commercial? Wow. Four. Yeah. Four, floors four floors of fine, fine furniture. furniture. Say that's Yep, six they were times. celebrating their 25th year at that point because they were established in 1929. Oh, boy. Some more contractors and Plattsburgh Motor Service. And Plattsburgh Motor Service, which has been a fixture uh, yeah, in this area for, for a, long a long time. time. Because I also said this, I think, on the air, but back in the 1950s when we were building hot rods and restoring mm -hmm. old cars, where did we come to get the, the work done and get the head shaved? And yeah, PMS. So right yeah. here, yeah. Plattsburgh Motor Service. Angelo's Delicatessen, yeah, yeah, Delicatessen names. Texaco. Texaco, Texas Company. Okay, oh, Gordy, we got some more great stuff here. Bouillet Baking. Oh, Ooh. my goodness. Just left us all not that long ago. Yeah, absolutely. Plattsburgh Electric Supply. So it's amazing. So many of these places, Myers Drug. 
Oh boy. Uh, Church Oil, all the Tidewater Associated. These are all some of these places. A lot of them still in existence. Others yeah. are just fond memories now. Yep. Uh, L. H. Buck. <laughs> <laughs> Right and Morrissey. Morrissey, Schubert's, remember oh, that? Oh, yeah. sure. Women and Children's Store. The Army-Navy Store, the National Economy Store. Oh, my goodness, and it became the National Bell and National Bell National Bell, yeah, they had all different incarnations of that. Where? National Army Store. We had, yeah, we had the Army-Navy Store and the National Army Store down in Margaret. Yeah. And Payson's. And Payson's Jeweler. And they, I didn't realize this. They had a furniture store, too, Gordy. It says, Welcome to Plattsburgh Air Force Base, Payson's Jewelers and Payson's you know, Furniture I Store. I didn't know I that. I forgotten that I didn't until didn't you know just that. refreshed my memory. And Thomas Clark Jewelers. Jeweler, Sacconi Vacuum Oil Company. Wolf's Department. Wolf's Department Store, store. yep. Boynton Boynton's, shoes. huh? Post uh, 125, the, uh, the VFW. Shires, Shires Liquor, Liquor and Wines, Montgomery Ward, now when they were down on Margaret Street. Downtown, and, now, and then at the mall. Yeah, and then, then at the mall for a while. And then gone. And then gone, yeah. Lippa's Jewelers. Lippa's, uh, Todd, uh, John B. Todd Company, sold uh, Pontiacs and Packards. His phone number, he had two phone numbers. He had 27 and 28, Gordy, so you can, you'd always uh, be sure to get a hold of him. I bought a... Uh, you know, I'm, I might as well jump in with my, sure, own, my own memories, but I bought a, a 1967 GTO from Ooh. John Todd. There you go. What an automobile. What I love to have. I, I lived now, in West Virginia for a while. Now that out with he new GTOs. One. A friend of mine in, in West Virginia, I lived there for a while. He had, he had one. I don't think it was a 67. It might have been a 69, maybe. Jackpot oh, Motel. Jackpot? Morris Supermarket down on, on, on uh, Champlain Street. M. Laurie and Company, Pete Blant's business at that point, uh, Rector's Market, Lapham's Grocery Store, some architects, Benedict, Benedict Ryan and Sayre, uh, Robinson and Holcomb, they're attorneys, oh, I believe, sure. right? Uh, Andrew Rabideau, a contractor. And Ken Wood was a complete flooring service oh, contractor. Well, Levy sure. Brothers, we spoke earlier before, Wholesale Tobacco, Levy Brothers, Kinney Shoes, the Lake Placid Inn. E.T. Yep. E. Harrison's son. Nitsy's now to talk about your memories. Oh, boy. One of the birthplaces, if not the birthplace, of the Michigan. Of the Michigan. Of course, there's always be that argument about who came first. I love first. it. Yeah, I love that's it. That's wonderful. And, and who cares? And who cares, right. Yeah, it's just and great. I, I, we used to, we were Nitsy's family. I know you had your Claire and Carl's family, and you had your Nitsy's families, and we always migrated to Nitsy's for some in reason. Later years to Gus's and to. Oh, I, I still Ronnie's go to Gus's. I go to Gus's for the fish, for the perch, the Lake Champlain yeah. perch, yep. Yeah. E.S. Mason, Cumberland Motors, I remember them well. Woolworths, of course, downtown Plattsburgh, uh, Five and Dime store, Shell Oil Company. These are all pretty boring ads because they no, don't have it. the pictorial. Well, I mean, for the viewers, yeah. they would be boring because they don't have the pictorial aspect to them. They're just print ads, uh, mostly text. Here's the uh, uh, original vision of the oh, federal right. housing project, the John Collins uh, project over here in Plaza, the Sharon Avenue area, Terrell Avenue, named for Mayor Terrell. Wonderful picture. And it's a, it's a drawing. It looks like it's the architect or some type of planning type drawing. John Collins Park. Yeah, and that's, of course, still in existence over there. Not the only a couple blocks from the known, here. Uh, known affectionately as the project. And Helmer course, Brothers. Jack Helmer, uh, Schaefer Beer Distributor. Uh, from Morrisonville area, I believe. Oh, Jack yeah. was, right? Penny's. J.C. Penny was uh, now uh, Criff Furniture. It was right there on the corner of uh, Broad and Margaret. And there's Claire and Carl's that we spoke to earlier. The Strand, of course, that's uh, big in the news today oh, with uh, the God. tax problems, obviously. And Herman's. Herman's, the ladies' ready-to-wear shop. Robert Long, of course, the Long Apartments on Oak Street are named for. Fit right. For Kresge's. I remember oh, Kresge's sure. down on Margaret Street. Bordeaux Supermarket on Montcalm. Nash's Service Station, Nash's Bowling Alley. <laughs> remember Nash's Bowling yeah. Alley? I don't remember Nash's Bowling oh, Alley. Oh, I no. certainly do. It was uh, on it was on uh, River Street, yes, which it's is 21 now, South River, which is now Durkee Street. Durkee Street. Okay. See, I that was just a bit before my time then. Their phone was 1958, so I they came it. along later. Yeah, Sumbler Oil Company. Yeah. I remember them. Warren Holt. Warren Holt, of course. And Gordon Abram Drug Store, Gordon Boot Shop. Yep. Roderick Motors over oh, on South Peru. Of course. Clinton Automotive Parts. Ailes Motor. Oh, Curtis so, Ailes. What yeah. a character. Nash. What they sold Nash's, huh? Oh, what a character. Day's Tire. 
Variety Flower Shop down in Bridge Street. Pavone Shoe Hospital, there of course. Now, they were at that point on Margaret Street. Okay, yep. I remember that. And we've got uh, Cody's Office Equipment and Trainer Insurance. Yeah. Amongst others, uh, Condo Pharmacy and Phil's Dry Cleaning oh, still down there on Montcom, and their phone number was eight one four. Yeah, I love it. Plattsburgh, Plattsburgh Seafood, seafood. Uh, was that was, was that Nap Light or? Not sure. I can't remember who had that. I vaguely remember. And a bunch of other, the State University Teachers College, uh, HB uh, Kimmy Company, who are a wholesale plumbing uh, supplier, <laughs> Henry's Diamond Importers. Why shop? Everything for the women at 38 Margaret. They, these are great. Bridge TV and Appliances on Bridge Street, of course. Yeah. Edwards Linen Shop. Stoughton's Jewelers. Remember very well in the corner of Bridge and City Hall for many years. Castles Apparel. Northern Insuring Agency. Still going strong. Merritt Shoes. Merritt Shoes. Oh, over on Margaret Street. Mickey's, of course, still here oh, in Plattsburgh. Boy. The Union, not still here. <laughs> the Union the Hotel. Monopole. The Monopole. still here in Larkin's Pharmacy. Pharmacy. Nelson's Flower still going strong. Lario's Brothers. Uh, sure. Yeah. Beamers. Beamers. Where did I saw Marie Beamer at the uh, recent Irishman of the Year banquet? There you Marie go. Marie Beamer. Yep. MP Fixed Myers. in this community for a long time. For a long time, time absolutely. To buy its paint and paper. And this must be Homer West, right? Homer West yep. Construction Company, Over of course. Over on Grace Avenue at that sure. time. Finnan's Fun Farm. We lost that oh, not too long ago. Oh, my goodness. What, boy, if those walls could talk, I can imagine. Oh, can you imagine? Murray's Groceries, Plattsburgh Buick, they were down on Bridge Street, Rosebud Creamery. Isn't that funny? I was just talking with somebody this morning about Murray's Grocery and how they really? lived in an apartment upstairs. No kidding. I love it. Copeland, Copeland Oil. Oil, General Ice Cream, they were seal test. Hannah Contractors, Charles Nephew was an oil distributor. Copeland, boy, there are a lot of oil and gas station yeah. companies. Yeah. Dodge and Fraser Jeweler, a lot of more jewelers than I remember, too. Sure. Stud Stud Holmes. Holmes, sure, I remember yep. them and Connor's yep. Pharmacy. Yeah, Corner Bookstore. Well, this is where this thing came from. The corner at that time was known as the Corner Bookstore, and now I believe it's called the Cornerstone Bookstore. I believe. Yep. Fountain and Lucas. Oh boy, I used to buy my steaks there. My oh boy. Dear dear friends, and that was in existence for a long, long time. Long, long time. The Candyland. Oh, a lot my. of memories there. Well, I'll bet. Uh, not for me before my time, Gordy, but I know a lot of people. The Candyland was yeah, a big part of their life. Somebody once again mentioned the Candyland in an email to me. Really? Not more than five days ago. Isn't that something? And then uh, Basil Duquette, of course, the oh, uh, Fourth yeah. Ward, uh, also was my neighbor across the street here on Main Mill. Um, Andrew Bro and Sons, general contractors over on Robinson Terrace at that point in time. Uh, and then we come to the committees for the groundbreaking ceremonies and a list of a lot of those people we've already mentioned, Gordy. Um, and then there's a thing at the same time that the groundbreaking was held for the base in 1954, it was also the day before was the 12th anniversary of the 8th Air Force, which was activated back during World War II uh, on January 28th. I didn't know about that anniversary. Let's show that. Yeah, that's, that's quite yeah a nice absolutely. Picture. Yeah, it is a great picture. And that was the 8th Air Force. Of course, that was the contingent here that originally served at Plattsburgh Air Force Base. And they uh, were having their anniversary at that point in time. So and that's pretty Boy, cool. there's the famous logo on the back. And there's the famous logo of the Strategic Air Command, which was the... The presence here at Plattsburgh in the early days when we had the B-47 SAC. SAC, that's right. And we started off oh. with the B-47 bombers and moved on to the big eight-engine B-52s. That's a treasure. That, that I book, said it before. You said it before, now but it is I'll true. I'll say it again. That is a real treasure. <clears throat> We'd like to know uh, how many others might be available yeah, in I the area. Know. Here's, oh. a, here's one more great picture. This oh. is a drawing of Monty Street School. And this is this kind of uh, is good because it means something special to me because when I went to school, I started kindergarten when I was four years old, and I went, believe it or not, to a one-room schoolhouse. Really? And that one-room schoolhouse was right around the corner here on Wall Street, and it's now um, some type of a spiritual life center. At one time, it oh, was no um, it was um, Valley Vending's headquarters. But back in the early 50s, it was a schoolhouse. And the teacher there, Mrs. Leonard, had two rows of kindergarten, two rows of first grade, and two rows of second grade. Well, I was one of the kindergartners in, um, and went there. And they finally closed that school partway through my kindergarten year, which must have been 1958. 
And then I had to transfer to um, Monty Street School, which is now known as Momont School. But I went to Monty Street School. Well, this is a picture of Monty Street School before it was built. Yeah. And uh, it looks like it's probably the original artist's conception of what the sure. you know school should be. Isn't that but yeah, I tell people I went to a one-room schoolhouse. Oh, you're not old enough. I said, no, I'm not. But I really went to a one-room schoolhouse, and uh, we had a basement down in in uh, a bathroom in the basement, and we had a cloak room, and we had one room with the the rows as I described, and then in the back we had a big table. And during recess, if it was um, inclement weather, we would play old maid cards. I still remember doing that. And I remember a Halloween party. I was there at Halloween for that year. And my next door neighbor um, was in kindergarten with me, and we were both bobbing for apples, and we got into a big squabble over that. <laughs> bobbing for apples. Bobbing for apples. You know, I, I'm just as an aside here, but this is the way my mind works. Uh, a lot of our viewers went to small schools. Uh, one and two room schoolhouses, mm -hmm. as I did, and you don't have to, you know, some schools weren't centralized until mm -hmm. much, much later than others. Mm -hmm. And I was writing somebody an email last night saying, you know, I don't know if it was something that I did or said, but now that I recall, every school I ever attended until college is now gone. Really? Wow. Gone. The buildings, most of the buildings don't even no, exist okay. anymore. But I went to some very small ones, and I'm. In the process of uh, communicating with a wonderful woman whose uh, name is, is Jane Lawless Murphy, who was brought up in the Beekman Town West Crazy area, she calls it, <laughs> West Jay-Z, has gone on to bigger and better things and, and lived, maybe not better, but bigger things, lives now in Port Washington, Long Island. And she thought enough about her upbringing here in the North Country with the, with the famous Lawless family to write what I have described as a delicious book. And I use that word carefully because it's called Sugar on Snow. <laughs> and she talks about the District 13 schoolhouse, mm -hmm. which we've talked about in our interviews with Addie Shields and others mm -hmm. in the past, and about growing up in this area around Rand Hill and going to yeah. church in and, and, uh, Morrisonville and so on. And the way she describes her memories, I can identify because she's just about my age, mm -hmm. mentioning the names that she mentions, the events that she talked about, just terrific. And I think it's great when people think enough about their roots yeah. to write it down and then share that with the rest mm -hmm. of the company. I don't know if that book will ever sell 10,000 copies. But well, it's, maybe not, but, it, it, but it's there, and, and, and it means something to some people, and that's what's important, I think. I think it's really terrific. So uh, how much, have you done any writing yourself? Um, I do I do some freelance writing, mostly like magazine type articles uh, for some of my clients over the internet. Um, uh, a website called uh, fitandwell.com. Um, my wife and I do some health articles and things like that. And uh, I did copywriting course in television. I used to write, you know, ads and and um, things like that. And uh, I was thinking the other day how many commercials I've oh written my in my lifetime. Oh. And at the the height of my career, if there ever was a if there ever was a height of my career in the radio this business. This is it right now. Today is the height of your career. I, I like to think of it as being that way. But I don't write many commercials anymore. But in those, those days, it was not uncommon to write 20 or 30 or 40 commercials in one day mm -hmm. and to record that many mm -hmm. during especially busy times of the year, around Christmas yep. time and the holidays. Absolutely. And, you know, it's it's. I look back on it and say... How did I do that? <laughs> How did we do those things back in those days? But, you know, to, to get where you are, sometimes you have to take some very interesting paths, yes, don't you? Yes, you do, Gordy. Uh, the paths, there are many of them, and uh, as you go along through life, you choose certain paths, and sometimes you stumble or fall into the off the side of the road, and other times you, you pick the right one right at the right out the top of things. and uh, and But it all comes out in the end. It all comes out in the end, and you're there and you're where you want to be at some point in life, and that's when you say, I'm happy and I enjoy what I'm doing, and you try to give a little bit back if you can in certain ways, and uh, which is kind of what this was all about. You know? Yeah, and you certainly are giving back in so many ways. That's and I'm enjoying it tremendously. We're talking with Gary Skinkle here, telling the Skinkle story. <laughs> As it should be told, and there are a lot more chapters, so uh, stay, stay, chapters. stay with us. <laughs> now we're going to get down to the nitty-gritty. First of all, I want to know, uh, your interest in the, in the media started at childhood when you started m 
drawing comic yeah, books. You were right. interested in radio, and I'm sure the early days of television, television which much different than it is now. Yes, it did was. you have dreams of getting associated with the media? Not young really. Person? I didn't, Gordy, but I had friends, and we would put on the little shows in the cellar type things. And that's where it starts. It, that's where it starts. And of course, you you mentioned the comic book fascination I had in drawing and making my own comic books and things of that nature. Um, I always loved radio. As a matter of fact, I collect old radio shows on audio tape. Do you really? Yeah, I have a whole bunch of them upstairs. We'll talk, talk to sure. me after. I have access. Okay. And um, television was always a big thing. Of course, we only got two channels here at my house. We got Channel 3 and Channel 5, the NBC and standard, CBS. That was standard, standard fare back then, unless you lived in a big city with some independent stations. And um, the great TV shows from the from the 50s and 60s were what I grew up with. So yeah, I always got interested in the media, and I ended up working in the media not because I made a conscious effort to do that. Uh, my education, my college education, is in media, but I went to work in media before I got the education to go along with it. So did you go to school here? I went to Clinton Community College and, and graduated in 1990, and then I graduated from Plattsburgh State with a degree in communications and you know mass media in 1992 and uh, but I had worked in television from the late 70s so this is a good lesson for the young people now who may be contemplating dropping out of school or not finishing their education you oh, didn't I'm finish a classic high school. case I did not finish high school I left high school uh, I left, actually left high school in my junior year uh, several weeks before the end of my junior year and um, I did go back and I had enough credits so I could have went back as what they called a sub senior and gr actually have graduated in the three years instead of the four. But that only lasted a few more weeks, and um, youthful indiscretions got the best of me, and that was the end of my high school career. <laughs> I, I call mine youthful indiscretions, too. But but, we all um, it's interesting because today there's uh, fe feature articles in the newspaper today about the GED program, and um, I took advantage of the GED program in the early 70s um, when I was uh, had a short stint in the Air Force, and one of the things I did, though, while I was in the Air Force was get my GED. And then subsequently, years later, um, I went back to, and went to college and got my bachelor's degree. My wife, she kept going, and she eventually got her master's degree. <laughs> so and I got to catch up. <laughs> oh, you play catch up with that? No, part. not really. I'm happy. She's happy. I'm happy. And uh, that's worked out well. But education, the key thing. Um, Knowledge it, is power. Education is power. I absolutely. Mean, it sounds, it's... it's it uh, almost sounds like a trite phrase, but it's not. And you know, as, as a our, lot of these cliches have a lot to them. It's like old wives' tales. Those old exactly. wives were pretty darn smart, it's and these cliches exactly may right. sound corny, but it's corn's a, good for it's you. It's a so. tough, complicated world. It is very we tough and complicated you, you world. Better, you better either do some serious reading or get there and get a degree in something and then work your way. But every Especially day is an today. education for me. It is. And that's the beauty of the Internet. The beauty of the Internet, it, it's amazing. Uh, Gordy... I didn't. I wasn't one of these techie type people, but around uh, the mid '90s, my wife said to me, "We need to get a computer." And I used a computer years ago. I did inventory control um, for McAdam Distributing on one of those old no IBM kidding. mainframe oh, deals. Oh my goodness! But that was pretty much the extent of my computer um, experience. At the television station, we eventually did get computerized, but I dealt with stuff that was so generalized. I mean, or not generalized, but very specific that I didn't acquire the skills that most people today, they just pick up in grade school. I dealt with very basic things on the computer. And my wife said, well, we need to have a computer. You need to have one. And she talked me into it in 1995, October of 1995. And I told her, I said, that's fine. We'll." And back then, it, I think it cost us almost $2,000. And I said, that's fine. We will do that. And I said, I'm going to tell you what, though. I'm, I'm gonna, within five years, I'm going to figure out a way for that box to make us some money. So I started, oh. and when we did, and we did, we worked on that, and um, and we figured out a way to start making some money. And I was still working in television at the time, and um, I started doing some things and making a little money, and on my spare time and um, on weekends, and uh, I started making not bad money, not as much as I was making on my job, but it was starting to get up there, and I'm starting to think, gee, I wonder what would happen, and what I'd be able to accomplish if I were to do this for myself as a job. And um, I'm not getting rich, but I'm happy. And so that's what I did. I eventually left uh, my television career and just kind of ventured out on my own. So. That's wonderful. So let's t tell us how that started. 
<laughs> well, it started with a, a, a co-worker, a friend of mine named Brian Gerand at Mountain Lake Public Television, who was into antiques and collectibles and numerous things. And after I got a computer and started getting online and stuff, he started learning about people buying collectibles and antiques and things of that nature over the internet. And he thought, gee, that would be a wonderful thing. And he asked me if I thought I could maybe help him out with that. And this was in the days before eBay. There was no sure. eBay, so you couldn't just go on eBay and sell a thing. So I built him some little websites, and took, we took photographs of his, um, of his various things. We had a book on one of the old child uh, movie stars, uh, Jackie Cooper. And um, I, I would go and track down people that I thought might be interested in the products uh, that Brian had to offer, the yeah. items that he had to offer. So I'd surf around the Internet looking for websites that fans had created about, like, say, their favorite uh, child movie actors and sure. things like that. And I found a guy in California that was a big fan and um, told him what my client had to offer. And um, he made an offer, and Brian accepted it, and we sold the book. And I made a commission. He had an old <laughs> cigarette lighter from uh, from the 30s, uh, and um, it turned out that was worth some money. And so I, I was able to find a buyer for that and um, and made a, a small commission on that. He had beer memorabilia, um, old beer labels. Um, oh, I forget what he had, the, uh, the little coasters. Uh, he had a bunch of them from... He had beer labels from a very obscure beer from Albany area at one time, and we, so we sold some of those. And then eventually, when eBay came, that ended that for me because by then he he was computer savvy and um, was able to get involved with eBay. And uh, but that that was kind of interesting. So that's how I first got into the idea of maybe making some money uh, via computers and via the internet. And then um, I picked up the paper one day, and there was an ad, a very uh, very vague help wanted type ad. And they were looking for someone in the Plattsburgh area that had uh, space, but they had to have a minimum height requirement for that space. And it turned out it was a software company from Quebec City. And it was a company called Morisoft, which is no longer in existence. And they were looking for a distributor in the United States for their products, which were CD-ROM you know, software presentations. So for a couple of years, good old 31 Main Mill Street was the was the United States headquarters no for this Canadian kidding. company. And you had not lived in until you see a semi-tractor trailer back down that narrow driveway you that you drove in. Be. No <laughs> kidding. The UPS truck would come, <laughs> and uh, at the, the Bilco doors would be unlocked in the afternoon, and the UPS, I would leave a sign out whether I had a pickup for him. And if I had a pickup, he'd open the doors and come down, and the pallets were there, and he'd take the shipment Isn't off. Isn't that amazing? So we did that for a couple of years and, and, and made some money doing that for this Canadian company, shipping all over the United States their product because it was cheaper to do it from a U.S. address, oh, of, course. of course, than it was from the Canadian address. Unfortunately, that company had a good thing going for them. They were doing um, what's called shareware. Uh, uh, they were selling demo, demo versions of, 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 of games, and they were selling them really cheap because they got them for free from the manufacturer, and they were selling them cheap, bundled up in packages, and they were doing pretty good doing that, but they decided they wanted to develop their own software, and they did have some success originally. They did a CD-ROM uh, multimedia presentation on pregnant women and everything a pregnant woman would want to know video audio stills and um, every aspect of pregnancies and uh, pregnancy and it was wonderful it was in French Canadian and um, they got some sponsorship from a governmental agency in the province of Quebec and they were doing pretty well with that <laughs> then they wanted to do an English version and so they hired me to do the English voiceovers oh, and they did, uh, really? but they never they never uh, produced it and they okay. and they just they were uh, they weren't paying attention to their cash flow. They were, you know, they were just dreaming of the of the bright future with the success they had from their French Canadian version of their own software. And eventually they went under. So that didn't. I ended up with some very nice shelving unit in my basement. Did you really? <laughs> yeah, they told me you you just keep that. It would cost too much to ship it back across the border to them, and they were going out of business anyway. So I ended up with uh, about a thousand dollars worth of nice industrial shelving, which my wife really loves because she can store a lot of stuff there. Did you save any of their product? I have two CDs left. Would you like really? to see them? Well, we'll take a look at it. Okay. Sometime. Well, I got to just kind of reach around the corner here. Take your time. Okay. Well, there's no rush. I just got to reach around the corner. And... See, magically, he's already been around the corner and is uh, back. <laughs> All right. Tell me about these. 
Well, I don't know a lot about them because, to tell you the truth, I've never actually played one of these games. You never have? Come but on. I, well, no, I really never have. I've never played any of these games that, that Morisoft distributed. But this one is uh, Men in Black, and then there's about 11 other demonstration versions of these games. Now, you've got to remember, we're going back now into the, um, into the mid to late 90s with this stuff, so this is kind of even low tech. But what it was was... A game like, for instance, maybe back then of Men in Black would cost 70 or $80 maybe at the store. So these fellows, uh, one was a Finnish fellow from Finland, and the other was a French-Canadian fellow named David. They got together and they thought, whoops, that's okay, you won't hurt anything with that. They thought, well, mothers walk into a store, they don't want to spend 70 or $80 to buy a, a video game for a kid, and then the kid doesn't like it and won't play with it after two days. So they got together and they said, well, let's just get the test drive version of these things from the companies. They're available for free anyway. I mean, anybody could get them and download them on the Internet and try them out. Well, they got the idea, let's download them and then duplicate them because they're, they were made available for redistribution. So that's what they did. And they would put like 10, 12 different game test versions on one disc and then sell them for like five ninety five or six ninety five. A mother could go into the store. She said, oh, well, five ninety five, no problem. Then if the kid really liked the game, maybe you know the kid's been after her for a long time. Get me this game, get me this game. And she doesn't want to spend 70 or 80 bucks. She'll spend 595 and then see if he's really interested in playing it. So they did that, and they had tons of these. I had tens of thousands of these discs here in my these cellar. These have never been opened. Um, have they? No, these, are, well, these haven't been opened. No, they're no, still wrapped they're up. All yeah, wrapped they're the up. last they're... two. I just gave away a bunch I of these. I love it. Did you really? Oh, yeah, because, I mean, I just had box after box of them, and I had nothing, you know. That, that Even around until you're 90, they'll be. Well, those two I'll just keep, but yeah. I got rid of I, The kids in my neighborhood were very happy because for one summer there a few years ago, I put boxes of them out by the curb oh, free. Oh, did you really? Oh, yeah, <laughs> and they would come along. They would come along and take them by the box. You could have sold them on eBay now. Um, well, probably not because they weren't, I mean, they were like older, older things, and, you know, with the computer technology, how it goes today, it's everything's so fast. Just but, remember, the first computer game was Pong. Pong. I played Pong when I was I've a teenager. Got, I've got it at home. Do you really? Isn't that something? I remember playing Pong at, at Pong in an arcade down in Saratoga Springs, New York, when it first came out. Josie's Arcade down on either Caroline we, or Phyla Street. I think we burned out a TV monitor <laughs> too. <laughs> playing but, Pong, yeah. <laughs> back and forth and back and forth. So anyway, so, what, you graduated from that? I graduated uh, Plasper State in 92. No, I mean from, oh, that from job. Oh, I graduated from doing that to, um, well, I'd been doing that, not only that. I was, of course, I was working at the station then. And then, um, and then I left the station, and I was doing that in addition to a lot like what I'm doing now with affiliate programs and selling advertising via the Internet, and, um, and pretty much been doing that since I left the station in 2000. So that book that we spent so much yeah. time looking at, how do people find it? It's real Online. simple. They go to plattsburghonline.com, Gordy. That's all they got to do. That's this website address, plattsburghonline.com, in their computer on the internet and then they just click on the where it says Plattsburgh Air Force Base groundbreaking ceremony souvenir program January 29th 1954 you click on that and you wait a moment for it to load up and there's the front page and it gives a little summary of what it's about and then if you want to start actually looking at the guide you just click here or click here and you can start seeing the whole thing isn't it so neat? And there's the front cover of the book that we were going through earlier. Bigger than life. Bigger than life. I wanted to make it so it was clear enough, you know, sure. for people to see, and people can make smaller Did you copies. Scan it here? Did I you scanned it on a little scanner right over there on the other desk. A little flatbed. Little scanner. flatbed scanner. Yep, all 132 pages. And then you just um, th there's navigation at the bottom of each page to go to the next page. There's that photograph oh my of the air of the barracks, the old barracks, and then you just kind of wow. continue along the way. January 29, 1954, and there it is groundbreaking day proclamation by the mayor, who was John Terrell back in those days, and so on and so forth. And you just keep going through the whole 132 pages, Corey. Anywhere you want. And it's want. there for anybody. It's at plattsburghonline.com, and then just click on that. So let's talk a little bit airways. about plattsburghonline.com. Okay, well, Plattsburgh, well, let me go back to the original page. It'll make it a little easier for us to, to get an idea. And then we'll uh, take a look. Plattsburghonline.com, basically, Gordy, is just a little website about the uh, 
about the Plattsburgh area, Platt, the city of Plattsburgh generally, although I do uh, have some little bit of information on there about some other areas. Oops, wrong one. Hang on a second. <laughs> Take your time. There we go. That's where we want to be right there. And that's just basically it. You go to PlattsburghOnline.com. This is what you're going to see. You're going to see City Hall, which is a photograph I took. There's my old Chevy that I used to own. Oh that's the God. day I took that. I took that photograph. Um, over on the left is just some basic informational uh, on content for uh, people that are, are looking for information about Plattsburgh. Um, telling about where it is, population, how it's accessible, giving a little brief historical uh, thing. And um, of course, yeah, we have photographs. Got some great photos. Well, these are just photographs I took with a digital yeah, camera. They're, and they're wonderful. Well, they came out all right. Uh, I think I, I'm, I was very impressed when I first took a look at it. And um, then over here, also on the left, once we get through all the spiel about Plattsburgh yeah. and everything, we get sure. to some uh, important links. Um, I have links to the official city of Plattsburgh website and the official Clinton County website and. Here's an interesting link. It's about you might want to look at this sometime, Gory. It's a, this is not part of my website. This is another fellow that ran across my website, oh. and he was in the 380th uh, bombardment wing. Oh no! And kidding. he has a very nice history about uh, Plattsburgh Air Force Base and the 380th bombardment wing's uh, um, role in that. So that's something, but it's mostly just text and and but it's got some really good, um, interesting stuff. And let's see. You know, I I wonder he doesn't say where he got the script from. Uh -huh. That script sounds vaguely familiar, uh, and I don't of this. Yeah, uh, I don't know. Like and he, I, he may have got it somewhere. Well, you know, for m many years, while the base was located here in Plattsburgh, mm -hmm. I recorded the script and put the music to uh, programs uh, about the history of the base, and right. uh, public information offices would turn those into. Beautiful three screen presentations uh -huh. with movies and stills and slides, and they would show them during these uh, air base liaison testimonial dinners. Oh, okay. Some of them became so popular that Eighth Air Force made copies to distribute among bases all over no the kidding. all over the Eighth Air Force, ah. and they a lot of them included that history, almost word for word that you were just showed at really? the inside. So. Some well, that guy. may be where the fellow yeah. got it from. I think I forget what his name was. And there's a history right in that book that you had. And yes, I'm absolutely. sure some of the language came went back that far. Oh, you know? I'm, I'm, there's this, no uh, doubt. Beautiful shots. Yeah, I guess some nice little shots of just you know Plattsburgh. I mean, we're focusing primarily on the city of Plattsburgh, but the city clerk Keith Herculo and I were talking about this website yesterday uh -huh. and, and how impressed we were with the way you presented well, it. Well, thank so you. It's done Appreciate extremely that. Extremely well. Well, that's good. I'm glad to... For somebody not from this area uh, who wanted to take a look at... What yeah, I think like. it gives I mean, a, a nice overview. Look, look at just beautiful shots. Yeah, actually, uh, I think that's my wife. <laughs> is it really? Yeah, you can't really see her, but that's her. I, we were down there that day and took that picture. But, yeah, we try to um, provide the, the information that a traveler might want to, um, to know right off the top. Um, you know, things like, you know, business. There's the Chamber of Commerce, the Development Corporation Park, and the Labor Department, and... Uh, some recreational thing, you know, I've got to know where the golf Not courses to mention are. mention heartburn causes injury. Right, yours. and these are articles, informational articles, um, like the Plattsburgh Air Force groundbreaking. Uh, just little, clever little cute things, uh, like this one here, a few words about birds. Just a little thing I threw together. Come on. <laughs> i got too many pages open here. Oh, That's is the that problem. All? Too many pages open here. Let me close some things out here. All right, you got there from there. We got there finally. Um, um, what I was saying, Gordy, is um, there's some cute little humorous articles over here. These are like a few limericks that I wrote one day about birds you and bird gotta feeders. Be kidding! Come on. And a little story I wrote. I love it. Yeah, and um, and then there's some advertising uh, from Google on the side, which is what helps generate the revenue for well, me to keep that, this. Yeah, how does that work? Well, how that works is is that Google, I'm sure the viewers are familiar with the term Google. It's a big company. It's a search engine. Uh, people that want to find things on the Internet, they go to Google.com, and there's a little box where they type in a little short phrase of what they're interested in finding. And then they press a button, and they get a whole page of results of, of web pages on the Internet that are relevant to the terms that they are searching for. Well, Google is the biggest one, and Google gets a tremendous amount of traffic. And what they do is they sell advertising on those results pages. 
and they also subcontract out to get even more traffic to those advertisers to people like me that have their we own websites so what I do is I build a web page like this a few words about birds I place a little tiny piece of a little snippet of code that Google sends to me on my web page this little screen you're seeing here is the actual code that creates the image the what you see on the on the on in the browser itself well there's a part of that is a little code that Google has sent to me and that makes these ads appear so when somebody clicks on one of these ads they go to that company that's advertising has paid Google to send them a, a web surfer and Google gives me a commission on the amount that they received from that advertiser so the person that's looking for in this case birds and bird feeders they're finding a, a company that offers the thing that they're looking for Google has sold advertising to that company and because I'm the one that actually sent the prospective customer via my website to their website Google gives me a percentage of the money they receive for the advertisement in the first it's place. It's a whole kind of marketing that oh, didn't even exist two decades ago. Oh, absolutely. Ago. And uh, the IRS actually has a category for it, a code number. Oh, they yeah, do? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So how do you contact Google to let them know you have this page available? They know. I, I was affili I affiliated with Google, and any page I, they sent me my code, I put that code on every page I have, and I have thousands and thousands and thousands of, of, of Internet pages. And that one code works on any page and the Google robotic spider goes through and looks at the content this particular page is about birds so the Google spider goes through and says oh it's about birds put the, well, bird, stuff on put the bird advertisements yeah. on there the bird feeders those the, the squirrel sure. proof bird feeders a whole nine yards and that's what they do now a different page would be you know there would be there would be different types of ads um, let's go back for instance to this page right here now here's one um, okay let's take a look at a closer look at generic drugs come on mm -hmm. let's go <coughs> see what happens is I have way too many things here it is right here and the the big thing now you hear a lot about Vermont. They want to uh, purchase the, the uh, medicines for their health plans, their their government sponsored health plans in Canada and things of that nature. This is an informational page about generic drugs and whether or not you should consider generic drugs. The ads that Google will insert on that are for prescription drugs and places where people can purchase um, prescription drugs. So that's how it all works. It's all a part of on Plattsburgh Online. But each individual page that contains the code, that tells the Google Spider to go and look at that one particular page and see what that page is about, and then we'll put the relevant advertisements on there. If I have a page about, uh, like this one, for instance, this page is a part of the souvenir program of Plattsburgh Air Force Base, kind of hard for them to determine what it's all about because there's not a lot of copy. Yeah. It's mostly image-based. But they kind of got the idea it's something to do with the Air Force, so they placed ads for various things, um, Shepherd Air Force Base housing and things of that nature, because they can't figure out specifically what this site is about. And I could really care less because this particular site, I'm not in it for the money. Yeah. You know, I was in it for providing the the booklet to uh, to people. That's interesting. So, but that's how that all works. And there's various other types of affiliate programs. Google's just one of of many um, that one can become affiliated with. Um, most famous probably would be Amazon.com, uh, where you make a commission where people buy things from, say, Amazon.com. Well, you make a commission if that person came to Amazon.com as a result of clicking a link on one of your web pages. Okay, let's talk about links. Now, sure. you have to realize you're not only educating people like Calvin and myself who use computers for hours every day, but you're educating people who don't know how computers work. And I'm, sure, <laughs> I'm sure you're blowing a lot of minds by virtue of this program today because the, the, the great charm and interest for me is that you have access to the world. The world, it's all and right from there. And from this website, you have links 
to thousands and thousands of other things. How do you hook those links up? You were starting to tell oh, us okay. off, well, that's, off camera. I see what you're saying. Yeah, Gordy, exactly. Well, it's called, it's called HTML, which is the word you see in the, the corner here. Right. That's hypertext markup language, and it's a type of programming language. And what it does is, by placing this on the Internet, it tells a web browser like Internet Explorer or Netscape Navigator, it says, when you see this, this is what you should produce on your screen, on the, on the end user's computer screen. So, for instance, here it's telling me that I should have um, a, f a font face of a certain type, of a certain size, and a certain color. And that's the text that we found on that page about the birds. Right. And then there are certain other types of codes that tell it to do other things, like make a horizontal line of a certain length and a certain color, um, make the pictures. The pictures are, are, are included as a result of uh, what's called an image tag. Uh, let's see if we can look at that real quick. Okay. Now there's the Google code I was talking about. By the way, this oh, is the see. see. I put this on my in sure. my in my thing, and that's what makes the ads appear on my web page. So you have to type all this stuff in to get a link. No, 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 not for, for the for the Google things. I type this is I type this in once. After that, I just copy and yeah. just paste it in. I see. To do a link actually is is in this format in the HTML language. It's you have to have this little part. I'll highlight it for you here. Oh. That's the beginning of the link. Okay. In this case, I'm telling that I want to link to PlattsburghOnline.com, and then this is the end part of the link right here. It tells it, okay, stop the link, and then this part in the middle is the part that tells it what on the screen is actually going to be the link. And in this case, it's a, a picture, and it's a picture of PlattsburghOnline.jpg, which is this photograph. So that photograph is, is I'm sorry, not the photograph, but the logo. That logo is linked back to the main page of the website so that when someone clicks on it, they go back to the main page of the website. But that's a link. A link is, all a link is, is, is you put a little piece of code in front of either a word or a, a, an image or whatever, and a little piece afterwards, and when someone clicks on that thing that's contained between those tags, they go somewhere else. And in this case, if someone were to click on this, they go to the souvenir program guide. If someone were to click on, on uh, let's pick one of these. Uh, they go to News Channel 5. It'll take a moment because it, I mean, there it comes. Okay. Whoops, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to do that. It's all right. I'm trying to get the stuff out so of that's right all how that all happens. that's how that all happens. those are called those are called hyperlinks links for short and um, if I click here I go to wiry hometown radio yep if I click here I go to the press Republicans website and that's the whole point of Plattsburgh online it's to kind of consolidate or digest all the relevant Plattsburgh in particular informational resources available in one place so that anybody anywhere in the world wants to see what's going on in Plattsburgh, they go to PlattsburghOnline.com. If they want to listen to the radio, they can click on the Wirey link and listen to Wirey. If they want to look and see what's happening in the newspaper, the Press Republican, they click there, they can do that. The various local television outlets, they can do all that. Uh, they may be looking for a nursing home for a relative. How much involved is your wife in this whole process? Well, not too much because she's a full-time family nurse yeah. practitioner. Um, she does some she does some freelance writing along with me for um, for some health-related articles and things like that. And um, but she's not real active in, in in this end. This is pretty much my baby, and she has her her work, and she doesn't have a lot of time to spend helping me with mine. Obviously, so you spend time every day on this. Project? Oh, oh yeah, I, I I work harder for myself than I ever did for anyone else. Isn't Absolutely, that the way you have to. Well, you have to because it's volume. See, I, it, it's a volume business. Um, I have to constantly be making new pages and new pages and new pages in order to get new aver you know get more advertising out there. And getting traffic to these websites can be difficult. Now, Channel 5 did a story um, back in, on January 29th, actually, on the day that this event occurred in Plattsburgh history, 50 years later. And um, so that helped generate some um, interest in PlattsburghOnline.com. And um, 
So you're constantly trying to do things to, you know, there's promotion involved. You have to market. I mean, I do, that's basically what I'm doing. I'm doing internet marketing. I'm marketing advertisers. I'm selling traffic. I'm shifting traffic from one place to another. And um, it, that involves getting it out there. So Plattsburgh Online, I figure America Online, people got that in their head, right? AOL, AmericaOnline.com. So PlattsburghOnline.com, it's easy to remember. If you're over in Iraq, if you're on vacation in the Caribbean, wherever you are, and you have access to a computer at one of those internet cafes or in your hotel room, you brought your laptop with you or whatever, and you want to see what's going on back home, it's easy to remember. PlattsburghOnline.com, and you go there, and then you can find out everything else you need to know from there because I have links to all the relevant things, you know, whether they're the media, um, you, the schools, recreation, business, history, culture. You want to know what's going on at the Center for the Arts or the Pendragon or Plattsburgh State University? Boom, you click and you go to their websites and see what's going on. And then um, articles, some are humorous, some are informational. Um, th those are there. And are, are you adding to these all the time or not? Yeah, I add to them on a pretty regular basis uh, as, as I create stuff. But this is, only one, you know, this is only one aspect of what I do, so I mean, I can't devote myself entirely to PlattsburghOnline.com. Yeah. But, but yeah, I do, we, we're... we're pretty much putting things. We also have a message board. Uh, oh my goodness. I now, should have known. Oh yeah. Um, yeah, this gal, Diane from Montreal, was looking to relocate Plattsburgh and wanted some suggestions, so I wrote her back. I, I posted sure. a, a return on there and let her know some things and gave her some ideas about where she could find some job listings and things. Sure. Um, here's someone, JC, from uh, Lake City Treasures in downtown Plattsburgh. It's, kind of griping about the fact that most people go shopping at the malls and don't shop in, yeah. in downtown Plattsburgh. Uh, we had, um, here's somebody that's looking to locate a friend of their father who was born in Plattsburgh in 1932 and went to St. John's class of 49 and she leaves her email so that if anybody sees this and knew her father or whatever oh, can do connections that. Connections like that are made every day and that's uh, wonderful. Yeah, here's a fellow, Paul, that said it's, uh, he saw the Plattsburgh Air Force Base thing obviously and uh, he was there from 54 to 59 and he said it was like time traveling. So he sent us, he left us a message saying that. that. Uh, here's January 29th, actually, when I left the message saying that it was online and, yep. and the whole nine yards. But, yeah, so that's available. Anybody anywhere can just go there to that page and they can click post message. And you spell it with a Y or an IE? IE. Okay. <laughs> and in just a moment, we'll see. Yeah. There you go. Gordy left us a message and said hi. Now everybody's <laughs> going to get on there and say, "What's Gordy? Is this Gordy Little? Who's yeah, he? Who's he? <laughs> I remember that well. All right. But so anybody can do that from any computer in the world that they're hooked up the internet. If they can go to Plattsburgh Online and they click on the, the message. message board and they want to leave a message, all they got to do is click on post message and type whatever they want. They don't have to leave their email. They don't have to do anything. They just po type whatever they want. Is this your main baby? Uh, well, as far as a website, well, I don't know. I, I guess. I mean, nostalgically and sentimentally, yeah, it's my, you know, it's my, my main baby. I guess you could say that. I don't do a lot in the way of websites for personal stuff. I, you know, I've, I've built some websites for other folks. And I mostly do the, what I do is more like, billboards on the superhighway the, you know what i mean i don't really do much in the way of building my own websites per se i either will build for some like um community link health on wheels um i do a, i do a website for them uh, uh -huh. that's one of my i mean that's that's their website i built it for them it's theirs but i maintain it and i host it and uh, and do that that's one um and then I also do, now that's a nonprofit organization, obviously, and that, this is a pretty extensive website. It has all kinds of stuff. Um, you go to who we are, and you will get information about their board and their staff and some photographs and descriptions. This is all very interesting because all of us who surf the net have done this mm -hmm. many times and not, know, and not knowing exactly how it works. Mm -hmm. So you're giving us the mechanics today, and I think this is a good education. 
and you can find out what's happening with uh, the Health on Wheels mobile health clinic bus. They have their calendar for March. I had to update recently and add that in they there. They give you the information they that send you post me, it? Yeah, they just send me the newsletter. Uh, my wife used to be on the board, actually, and um, so we were on the mailing list for the newsletter, so I, I get the newsletter anyway. And um, I just I change the calendar, and then I also have a little ticker on the on the beginning. Uh, for instance, they have a chicken and biscuit dinner coming up in April okay. at the Moose Lodge, so I, I put that on there, and then I'll change it next month to something, you know, yeah. some other. So they don't event. change their own website. You do it. No, right? I do. I do the website. You that's part. All. Yeah, that's part of the service I provide to them, and then um, I also do commercial stuff. Uh, there's an outfit called Splice On down in the Binghamton area. I do a website for them. Um, this is a pretty simple website. This is, see, I specialize in doing simple webs. I can't compete with the big boys, and I don't have the, basically I don't have the graphic skills and the equipment to do that. But what I can do is help the small business owner, and you know that's what I focus on. This is just a small website for a small company down in um, in Green, New York, down near Binghamton, and just gives some information there, and um, you know some. Uh, People want to contact them and stuff like that. And then we have a, uh, let's see, what do we got here? Uh, my next door neighbor actually has uh, just moved in. They just bought the house next door. Wasn't my next door neighbor when I did this. This is um, a, a local DJ's website. And this is just a one-page wonder, what I call a one-page wonder. It's a flat fee, and boom, and in oh, and really? out. Yeah, that's okay. you know that isn't even. I don't. It's not really a website. It's just a web page. You know. Would they come to you, or would you? Well, it depends. You select. You know, you go out and you sell yourself. You sell your service, or sometimes people hear word of mouth, and it's like I, I mentioned earlier. My wife takes art lessons, and she heard overheard her instructor talking about they like a website. So my wife's going to try to barter some uh, web pages for for some for some lessons. But um, th that's just one of those, and then uh, then you get the advertising, and the, yeah, this is the be okay. yeah because I provide the hosting for free. I don't charge them, I, so I provide it on my servers. I rent space on three different um, web servers. I see. So I I I in return for them getting the free website yeah. maintenance, I get to put my ads on. So I once in a while I'll make some money because somebody needs a DJ and they click on Rhode Island somebody in Rhode Island comes across the site and oh I need a DJ and they click there and I make either a few pennies or a few bucks depending on the particular yeah. advertiser. And um yeah, even my wife has her own website, family nurse practitioner dot com. Oh look at this. Yeah, and it has all kinds of different things. There's Resources for nurse practitioners and some resumes that people send in and or they can submit them and things about job searching and there's a little message board for that also and gives a little information about her and so she has her own website. Everybody has a website nowadays, Gordy. <laughs> well, you know, it's uh, what you're showing us is being replicated millions of times, many many around millions the world of times as we speak. Yes, it is absolutely many millions of times. This, the the internet is just growing and growing and growing. And in my youth, I never would have dreamed that I would have this much access. Gordy, in this my much youth, either did I. <laughs> information would would never believe it. This was no. beyond our wildest. Dreams. Oh, it's way beyond any dreams that I think any of us ever had when we when we were younger. And it just and it just exploded. I mean, it just all happened. Um, I remember that um, I was still at the Let's television turn station. A little bit sure, yeah. Let's talk so this Calvin direction can see our bit. faces. I found out, like I said, I didn't even own a computer until late in 1995. So that just shows you how fast uh, this whole thing has gone with the internet, in particular, the World Wide Web portion of the internet. And it's just utterly amazing that that it's there. I mean. It, I mean, I've kind of developed a way to make it into kind of a commercial enterprise for my own benefit, and then also to utilize it for hobby-related things like the like the souvenir program. But it's also such a wonderful uh, resource for education, obviously, and and for communications. I mean, the people are going to war overseas, and they're staying in contact with their families with video phones and emails and. Think about it. Yeah. The PC is now ubiquitous. Oh, absolutely. That word means it's everywhere. Everywhere. And it's literally everywhere. Yes, it is. Where those people, we talk about the Second World War, you had an interest in the Second World War, Calvin and I both do, mm -hmm. and they had a thing called V-mail. Yes. And a letter would be sent. It would be monitored by somebody to make sure you weren't giving away Radio your location. Yeah. And eventually it would get there. 
If your mother sent you cookies, they might be a little <laughs> stale by the time they Maybe. arrive. If and that could happen even, <laughs> even today. But we've come a long way, baby. Yeah. Yeah, we've come a very long way, and it, it's just amazing. And um, it's all out there, the good, the bad, and the ugly. I mean, um, it's it's all there. And uh, I think it's so important that we started doing this early now in the in the grade schools. I remember um, our children were learning the keyboarding skills. I never learned to, to type. I mean, I'm one of those hunt. Pack. Really? Yeah, but I mean, I do it pretty quickly, though. Yeah, me too. And uh, like most of us do, that use that technique. And... Um, but you know they teach the kid. They knew they knew years ago that this was going to explode, and they started teaching them the skills. They were looking at it more, I think, teaching them office skills that they would be using computers in the office, which we do. Obviously, everybody has a computer in their office, but they didn't foresee what it was going to be like with the internet and with um, like entrepreneurship. We talked about eBay earlier. I think there's like thirty thousand people, Gordy, just in the United States that are making a full time living yeah. selling products on on eBay auctions. Um, there are people like me that with the affiliate programs and things that are making a living or subsidizing their income or whatever um, on, on a full-time basis. Um, there are other opportunities. There's so many uh, opportunities to utilize the technology um, for financial gain, you know, for um, sentimental value like we did earlier with the souvenir program guide, and for educational value. So it's, it's just, like you said, it's ubiquitous and it's all over the place in so many different forms. We did a program recently at the planetarium at Plattsburgh mm -hmm. State, and we were blown away at the fact that he could uh, call up programs from some other university mm -hmm. and Boom. through their computers and have it all displayed yeah. on the dome at the planetarium instantly. I know it. It's amazing. Well, it's the speed of light, and um, there's not a lot. You know, there's not a long ways to go. I mean, you have to bounce off maybe a couple satellites and that, but. You, I mean, we're not talking any great distances, and at the speed of light, you can cover a lot of ground awful fast. So, <laughs> you know, the, and the beauty of it is, and I think about this a lot because I spent my whole adult life in the communications field, mm -hmm. and you have for a long, long, long time. time. Uh, the old, the old means of communication aren't going anywhere. Newspapers are very, very popular. Mm -hmm. Just look at the newspapers in this town. Mm -hmm. uh, radio's not going anywhere. Nope. Things are changing. Ebooks never caught on. No, and they haven't. A whole psychology behind that that yeah, I'd love is. to get into sometime because I like to hold a book and touch the pages. Absolutely, and that's why ebooks don't work. Smell, <laughs> smell the ink and feel the yep. print and so on. Uh, and yet, we are looking daily at a veritable explosion mm -hmm. of how information is exchanged. Mm -hmm. You got in on the ground floor, and that's well, kind of exciting kind of, for you yeah. because you're working on it every day. Yeah, every day I'm doing something. Um, I might be doing some freelance writing, so I'm not really doing much with the actual internet. Other days, I may be working on a on a website itself and doing programming and code, HTML code. Um, other times, I may be just checking statistics and figuring out how to market better based upon the feedback I'm getting from certain statistics. Um, you know, there's just so many facets to it. It's like any any business or anything else. There are a lot of different little bits and pieces of the of the cookie cutter that you have to place together to get the the full cookie, but uh, it is. It's um, it's just a it's such a, a big thing. I mean, I couldn't believe it. Five or well, five, it's been about nine years now. And um, when my wife said we have to have that computer, and I never thought I would spend that much that. money. Oh my goodness! I, I'm not going to spend two thousand dollars to buy. Why do I need one of those? I have one at work on my office desk. I don't need one at home. <laughs> well, we got one. I hear people say that every day. I work on the computer so much at, at well, my that's job. What happened. I don't know. But, but I they, work. they go home and they work on the computer, but they're doing work for their boss. I mean, I found myself doing that, oh, too. I, and I do it all the time, yeah. and that's a, that's a whole different ballgame. Yeah. I swore I would never become a slave to my computer. That was the big argument. Mm -hmm. You're going to sit there, and mm -hmm. your eyes will glaze over, yeah. and your body will atrophy, and so on. Mm -hmm. I just relish the ability. Yeah. Because I'm... Uh, I have a great thirst for knowledge, as you do. That's why I love to read. I love to watch the news. I, I pay attention to the world around me, and what better way to pay attention yeah. than just a few clicks? That's it, because you're going to find more here than than you'll ever be able to research and do for yourself. I mean, there's just it's there. Whatever you want to know is there. You think of an old song, and it doesn't matter if it's from the 20s or the, or the 70s, and you just remember one of the lyrics. And you can type that in, and boom, you'll be at a place where you get all the lyrics to that song, who recorded it, who wrote it, 
It's all there. Every bit of information. How many times do you think I've done that? A million, at least. <laughs> because, you know, I played music well, for yeah, a living exactly. for years and years and years and can't remember a, yeah. a title or an but artist. But that's the beauty. You don't have to remember anymore. You just, boom, it's all there. And there it all is. There it all is. It's wonderful. You've opened up a whole new world for us today as the world is opening up its own new world with the Internet. Gary Skinkle, thank you so much for allowing us to oh, come into thank your... You. Your uh, little room down here. Little room down in the basement. In the basement on Main Mill Street where all of the stuff you've seen is happening. You don't have to have a plush venue to do it, no, do you? No, it's a good thing <laughs> that you don't have to have that plush but venue. A, but this is a good hideaway. It is. It can... works out well, and plus I get the exercise. See, I'm not just in front of the computer. I have to go up and down no, those stairs there. many times a day. To get your meals, you do <laughs> yeah, anyway. Absolutely. Well, it's a lot of fun. I want to personally thank you also for what you've done with that Plattsburgh Air Force Base book. Well, that was... That. That's what opened the door to get us down here. Yes, today. it was, and it's a wonderful thing, and it's just a, it's such a big part of, of the whole community of Plattsburgh, and the memories of the Air Force Base will always be there, and as we move into the future, and anytime someone's feeling a little nostalgic, they can just do that and look at it and see some of those old ads and old photographs that we enjoyed earlier How today. How many people do you think clicked on that website while they were watching this on their television? Well, I, I, we hope, gotta get there. I hope well, so. We gotta check that out. I hope so because it's it's just it's just great and. Look for that Plattsburgh Laundry ad. I, I forget I which it. page it's on, but it's phone number three. <laughs> That's my favorite. That's the best. Thank you again, Gary. You're welcome. Good luck with everything you do, and who knows. Where we're going to be next time for our little corner.